Thank you so much, Sierra. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County. Welcome to our Monday, May 16, 2022 uh, virtual meeting. It is now 10.01 a.m. And I'm so glad that the public is here to join us this morning as along with the Board of Commissioners and our directors and our executive staff. Uh, certainly, I hope everyone had a, a great weekend, but I want to start the morning off by saying before I began today's work session, I would like to just uh, say our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends and loved ones in Buffalo, New York, impacted by the racially motivated hate crime where 10 citizens lost their lives in a mass shooting this weekend. I would like all of you, if you could, please join me for a moment of silence. Thank you, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County for joining me in a moment of silence. All right, we'll call this meeting to order, Board of Commissioners. Um, I would like to start with a roll call, District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. So I don't have any sound. Would everyone please mute their mics? Yeah. District, District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2 Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Robinson just got knocked off, so we're trying to get him back on now. Okay, I saw him earlier. Okay, District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4, Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Present. And Chairman Ramona Jackson-Jones, present. Well, Commissioners, we do have an established quorum. I will move on to public comment. Clerk, do we have anyone sign up for public comment this morning? And no, ma'am, we did not anyone sign up, but I would like to extend a um, invitation if it, there are any citizens on the line right now that would like to speak this morning, uh, if you could let me know now. Chairman, there is no one, so I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Clerk Watson. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move right into our presentations. We have two presentations this morning, one by Tim Pruitt from the Accountability Court. So his, that's the first presentation. And then to follow, uh, Tim Pruitt will be our boss update from David Good. So you have the floor, uh, Mr. Pruitt. Good morning, Madam Chairman, Board of Commissioners. It's good to see you all on this uh, happy Monday. Uh, at your invitation, we're returning back uh, to present you with some information. Uh, we were challenged by you, Madam Chair, to uh, give some information about the accountability courts to the board. And we were also challenged by Chief Judge uh, Bo McLean to show the board the real support that we have in our system with our personnel and staff. So we're breaking this presentation up into three parts. Uh, we're going to start off with Family Treatment Court. And we're going to show a video that they have that uh, TV23 was so kind to produce for us. And then I'll let their judges and their coordinators speak for just a minute before we take back over. My name is Michelle Harrison. I'm the chief judge of the Douglas County Juvenile Court. We have two accountability courts in our court system. One is the Family Treatment Court that addresses families who are at risk of losing their children to foster care. The other accountability court is our juvenile mental health court, which was created out of the idea that we are offering our youth a first chance at making good decisions. My name is Talia J. Nurse, and I am the Associate Juvenile Court Judge for Douglas County. I truly believe that every individual deserves a second chance and opportunities to put their best feet forward. And I think that when our families are stronger, our community is stronger. I'm Jennifer King. I serve as the Director for Douglas County Juvenile Programs and have the wonderful opportunity to serve as the coordinator for our Family Treatment Court. We have had 21 drug-free babies born while in the program. We've also had over 135 children reunified with their families. Hi, I'm Jamie Dappermont, and I'm the coordinator of Douglas County Chance Court. Um, Chance Court is the newest accountability court in Douglas County. Um, we serve youth aged 12 to 16 who are moderate and high risk for future involvement in the court system. 
Um, we provide individualized case plans, intensive case management, and ther therapeutic interactions with the judge. My name is Midge Ortiz and I am a case manager for Family Treatment Court. When participants come into our program, we use a um, case management intensive model where we provide services to the participants and we show them love. We love them until they begin to love themselves. My name is Don Paul and I'm the accountability court case manager for juvenile programs. Within our family treatment court, I provide clients with services that works along with the community. With Chance Court, we provide our youth in our communities with evidence-based programs to assist them with their needs. Hi, my name is Dina Davis. I am the Family Treatment Court of Douglas County's Peer Support Specialist. I am a 2010 graduate of the Family Treatment Court here in Douglas County. With my job, I get to come alongside families who are in the middle of probably the saddest and most hopeless part of their lives, and I get to hold their hand, help them get into recovery. What I wish people knew about accountability courts is that they really do restore lives and restore families. Hi, I'm Reagan Meredith. I'm the Chance Court Peer Specialist for the Accountability Court. What I'll be doing is empowering the individuals along in their process with my own experience and I'll be helping them achieve their needs, wants, and goals. Hi, I'm Lindsay Smith and I'm a case manager for Chance Court, which is the newest juvenile mental health court in Douglas County. This accountability court for me is huge. Uh, as a former probation officer, the ability to address and advocate for the individual as opposed to punishing the criminal goes a long way, especially helping the youth, so that way we have less adults. Hi, I'm Misty Finbar, and I'm a social services administrator for the uh, Douglas County Division of Family and Children's Services. And what that means is I oversee the foster care and adoptions unit, and that includes the cases where we are reunifying children with their biological families. Our mission statement within the division is stronger families for a stronger Georgia. And partnering with Family Treatment Court, the accountability courts, is one way in which we can achieve this goal. Just did want to I want to say good morning to Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners um, and just say that we are very excited for the, the kickoff of the Douglas County Chance Court, which is our juvenile mental health court. Um, we're very excited to be the newest accountability court in Douglas County. Um, we have currently on staff two case managers and a peer support specialist who are going to be working with youth who are 16 to, sorry, 14 to 16 years old um, who are moderate to high risk of reoffending or becoming further involved in the juvenile justice system. Um, but we, um, in addition to that, we have our family treatment court, which is the original treatment court in Douglas County. Um, and I'll let Judge Harrison talk a little bit more about Family Treatment Court as we, I think she's on now, so I'll let Judge Harrison talk about Family Treatment Court. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hate that the, that video didn't seem to work out so well. Uh, so our Family Treatment Court is uh, the very first accountability court in Douglas County, started uh, with um, Judge Peggy Walker back in 2007. Um, I do not have the numbers in front of me in terms of how many people we have graduated, but it's in the hundreds, uh, as well as um, several babies born into the program that were drug free and are healthy and thriving. Um, we, our program is approximately two years long. Um, and certainly can be extended when it needs to be extended. Um, our family treatment court certainly tries to keep children in the home without having to remove them into foster care if we can provide active um, and consistent services for our families. Um, Judge Nurse is sitting in here with me. She is uh, my counterpart to Family Treatment Court, and we work diligently together with our caseload 
um, addressing our family. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me. Good morning, everyone. I uh, took a brief recess from court to join in, but um, very happy and excited to be here. I, looks like I just have a head only. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this is it's wonderful work to be able to get to work with families um, and help reunify and restore. I think, as I've mentioned earlier, I think we are definitely much stronger when our families are stronger. So happy to serve. Jamie, I'll kick it back to you. Okay. Thanks, Judge. And just so everyone knows, I have my majority of my team in here with me. Let's see if I can show everybody. Um, they're all around me on the floor <laughs> today, but we we work very hard to serve the families and children of Douglas County. Um, as much as we can. So we are we're just really excited about all the opportunities we've been given and the court that we have and the courts that we have. Um, we just thank the Board of Commissioners for their support and um, look forward to doing bigger and better things in the future. Jamie, thank you very much. Uh, very quickly in the essence of time, I'm gonna turn over to state court uh, Joshua Bess is our new state court coordinator, and Josh, are you here? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I really wish that video would have worked. Also, um, had some great information on there. Of course, we all know accountability courts are um, just based on treatment, and they're here to help people turn around their lives and Douglas County in particular has done some amazing things and, and thank you for the support uh, of the Board of Commissioners uh, for these programs. Uh, they're really turning around the lives of these individuals and giving them another chance uh, to be productive citizens in the Douglas County. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you for that. Uh, the DUI court in particular, you know, we have two tracks um, judge Barker has the high risk track. Judge Fortner has the moderate risk track. Um, and we've seen a lot of families um, turn around. We've seen families reunited. We've seen people uh, significantly reduce their dependency on substance abuse by participating in these programs um, and, and, you know, turn around their lives and be sober and actually make the mention that they don't want to use any type of illicit substances at all. Um, you, what we have here in Douglas County, especially in the um, DUI track, is a highly significant um, graduation rate. We have a, a above average significant above average graduation rate with our programs, which means that we have a treatment team that is doing a fantastic job. We issue case management services. We work with probation. We try to give them that wraparound services and that support that they need to go out and be productive citizens of society. You know, we have people that, are that have been dealing with addiction uh, since they, their early adolescence, you know, uh, and they've been making mistake after mistake. And, and, you know, DUI course and accountability course give them that opportunity to rebuild their lives. Uh, one of the things that I've learned since I've been here is you guys don't use the term uh, rehabilitation because we realize that these people need to be habilitated uh, they, they need to be habilitated. They, they have never been shown some of these skills. And I thank my, the treatment team and, you know, um, all of my, the case managers. And, you know, we got Josh Nation on, on here and he's the one that introduced me to that, that saying about, you know, these clients need to be habilitated rather than rehabilitated. Some of them just need to be taught how to do things. And I think Douglas County does a amazing job. The DUI drug court program here does an amazing job. And it's reflected in our significant graduation rate uh, here in Douglas County. And I, once again, I appreciate, I appreciate the Board of Commissioners for all of the support and the, and the citizens of Douglas County really do benefit from the support that you guys have given these people. And I thank you once again. Tim, I'll turn it back over to you. Very good. Uh, we've got actually have a state court and a superior court video. Uh, I'm going to ask if we could play those back to back.
My name is Joshua Best. I am the State Court DUI Drug Court Program Coordinator. I coordinate with counselors, coordinate with them, um, the case managers, probation, and all those things. Accountability Courts came along trying to help people to deal with the underlying issue. And every day, they help people turn around their lives, rebuild their families, and refine their place in the community. I'm David Dazalas, I'm a probation officer. I ensure that all these participants complete all their probation requirements prior to graduation. If there's one thing I'd wish for is that I wish more people are more aware of the drug court. We're here to help people make a change in their lives and we're looking forward to helping out as many people as possible. Hello, my name is Nelson Martin. I am the Douglas County DUI Drug Court Case Manager. My role in the program is to assess the participants' ancillary needs, such as housing, employment, medical, education, etc., and then develop a case plan to suit their needs. I really wish everyone knew how much this program has helped our participants rebuild their lives. Not only has it helped them rebuild their lives, but it's also helped them rebuild relationships with their loved ones. Hi, my name is Joni Sims. I'm a counselor at the Douglas County Accountability Court. Accountability Court gives you the support that you need to start making changes in your life, to live a more productive, life and also brings your family together. Hi, my name is Jorge Morales. I am a CAC1 counselor, that's Certified Addiction Counselor. I think the one thing I would like people to know about drug courts is uh, not only do we help people uh, kind of learn how to deal with their addictions, but also learn how to rediscover how to enjoy life. Good morning, my name is Tim Pruitt. I'm the Executive Director of the Accountability Courts here in Douglas County. I oversee day-to-day -day operations of those courts. The thing I think most people don't know about the Accountability Courts is that currently we operate over 35 homeless and transitional beds here in the community. Giving people safe shelter allows us the first steps to rebuild their lives. Hello, my name is Teresa Gordy and I'm an executive assistant with the accountability court programs. I assist Mr. Pruitt with administrative duties such as accounting, grant writing and administration and the day-to-day -day operations of our office. The accountability courts are truly a place of recovery. Our staff is dedicated to the recovery of our participants and there is nothing more rewarding than seeing a participant graduate and move on to have a happy and productive life. My name is Jakia Griffin and I am the assistant director for Veterans Court. I assist our veterans with addressing their underlying needs and underlying conditions to help them regain stability. One thing that I wish everyone knew about accountability courts is just that they're efficacious, they work, um, and they are life-changing. Hey, I'm Karen Alexander. I'm the Senior Case Manager for Felony Accountability Courts. I help our clients get through uh, accountability courts and help them solve their problems. What I hope that people realize about accountability courts is that it doesn't just take a team um, that works on the accountability courts, it takes the whole community. And my hope is that everyone gets involved so that clients can become productive citizens and live a sober life. It's Kenneth Britton. Uh, I work with the uh, Hope Court. I'm a case manager. In the accountability court, we assist them. It's uh, unbelievable, the resources, the shelter, uh, housing, the uh, CSB appointments, uh, the mental health therapist, the counts is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before, and it's a one-stop shop. My name is Josh Nation. I am the uh, clinical director of the Douglas County State and Superior Courts. I'm in charge of the treatment side of the accountability court. In 2019, former Governor Nathan Deal, uh, he publicly stated that the Douglas County accountability courts were the most innovative in the state. My name is George Walker. I'm one of the treatment counselors for the Douglasville uh, Drug Court. I uh, basically spend my time giving addictions counseling to people and cognitive skills therapy to people. I recommend this drug court because research has pr proven that uh, people in accountability courts are, uh, have better outcomes. Hi, my name is Emily Hines. I'm a licensed professional counselor and employee of Willowbrook at Tanner. Um, I provide largely mental health um, treatment to the participants. I also provide some, some, some substance use counseling as well. Um, I provide treatment in the forms of group and individual sessions and on occasion family sessions as well. What I wish people knew about accountability courts is that it's a lifeline to a lot of people who did not have healthy childhoods. Um, many people who recidivate due to issues related to addiction and mental illness, 
were raised in environments where substance use was very normal in the home or uh, they were diagnosed and did not uh, uh, keep up with treatment. My name is Fred Davis. Um, I've been uh, here in Douglas County alone 53 years. Um, drug court saved my life because if I hadn't <clears throat> wasn't able to get in drug court uh, two years ago, um, I don't think I'd be here now to present this here. It's uh, I don't regret not now day of uh, taking drug court because it saved my life. Hi, my name's Anthony Nicolosi. Everybody calls me Nick, and I am a re-entry specialist with the accountability courts. When clients come in, we get them acclimated to the, uh, the system and get them on drug testing, see if they need transportation, clothing, food, um, anything they need to start this journey with drug court. Oh, I am Malaysia Gentry, and I'm the case manager for Felony Drug Court. I provide our clients with community resources, record client progress, and assist them with life skills so that they can achieve their goals. I wish people knew that accountability courts work. This is Thaddeus Rollins and I work with the Veterans Drug Court as a peer recovery specialist. Uh, we save lives, we help veterans improve their uh, quality of life. My name is Joey Bridgers, I'm the housing case manager for Douglas County Accountability Court. I have the privilege of helping men and women that uh, were formerly homeless get housing uh, within the community, uh, so it's very rewarding. Um, it's a great opportunity to help our clients and individuals have a, another shot at life. Mr. Nation, you are our clinical director and he is online this morning. He was on that video as well. I'm gonna go ahead and have him uh, say a word or two. Uh, yeah, pleasure uh, to be in the meeting this morning. My name is Josh Nation. I'm the clinical director for the accountability courts in state and superior court. And uh, it, it's a pleasure being here, talking with y'all a little bit about the successes of our program, and I, I really appreciate the support that you offer. These are some standout programs uh, uh, across the state and nationally. I mean, we really have some good outcomes and run some innovative programs. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. Ms. Yakia Griffin is with us remotely as well. Ms. Griffin, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, I am Yakia Griffin, and I am the Assistant Director of Veterans Court and I help support our veterans just in addressing their underlying issues and needs, helping them to regain stability and live crime-free, efficacious lives. Thank you very much, Karen. I believe that you've got somebody there with you in your office. So if you both would take a moment and tell us what you do and what that means. You're still muted, Karen. Got it. Hi, I'm Karen Alexander. I am, and it is a pleasure being here. Thank you guys so much for your support and uh, your time with us today. And I have another case manager. Hi, I am Malaysia Gentry. I am also a case manager for Felony Drug Court. And I want to thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to speak with you and also, um, that we work extremely hard to provide for our clients um, as far as just stability in the community with jobs, um, education. And that is really just a short summary of all that we do. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Good job, Mr. Lee Martin. Thank you, Mr. Pruitt. Uh, Thank you guys for allowing us to speak this morning. Uh, my name is Lee Martin. I'm with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Uh, I am the court liaison uh, between uh, the Sheriff's Office and all of the accountability courts. Uh, anything that the courts need from the Sheriff's Office and the Sheriff, uh, I try to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. I appreciate that very much. Uh, Lee works with all of the accountability court programs, not just Superior Court, but also State Court and Family Treatment Court. Uh, Mr. Bridgers, Joey Bridgers. Good morning, my name is Joey Bridgers. Uh, thank you so much for letting us uh, share this morning. I am the housing manager for accountability court. 
We currently have uh, roughly 40 participants housed in private and uh, county ran um, housing in all three courts. Uh, so we cover a pretty broad spectrum and uh, it's really helping give a lot of these folks, uh, for some of them it's the first time they've really actually had a home. And it's very rewarding to see people reunited with their families, have a safe place to live and really get their uh, feet back under them. So thank you for supporting us and uh, all that we're doing, that y'all are allowing us to do. Thank you. Mr. Bridgers also works under a grant that operates in family, state, and superior courts, so all three of those programs together. Uh, Emily Hines. Good morning, everyone. My name is Emily Hines. I am the mental health uh, treatment groups and individual sessions with the participants. I think it's a wonderful program and I am too, I'm also grateful um, to be able to speak with you about this and for the opportunity to do this in this county. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kenneth Britton and I work with the Hope Court. I work with Emily Hines. Um, I'm the case manager. She's the uh, mental health therapist and let me just say this, I came from 25 years of working with the um, State Department, as a matter of fact, with the State of Georgia Corrections and Parole, and I've managed a lot of caseloads, but I've never been in part of an organization that's had so many resources as we have here. Here's a place that we can actually house people, we can actually help them with, get their prescriptions, we get their uh, appointment for CSB, and um, we have sanctions that's gradually I'm not barking out orders. What I'm actually doing in this particular situation is helping them connect the dots. Before I told them to connect the dots, now we actually help them connect the dots. It's amazing what this program does. This is just a hope court. And you also have the veteran court, the drug court, and it's just something I've never seen before. Absolutely amazement. I didn't think I was gonna be back in this type of work, but I'm absolutely grateful that I am. Um, it's rewarding and we help people and we give them opportunities to get tools in their life that they can leave us with and they can take these tools to go and live a better life. Our objective is that they don't return, but if they get in trouble, they have some tools with them that they can live a better life. I've been doing this for 25 years and I've never seen anything like this. So thank you for your support and the resources that you give us. Um, thank you. I see that Judge Adams has actually stepped off the bench, so I will go ahead and open the floor for Judge Adams since uh, Ms. Hines and Mr. Britton have just spoken, and then we'll finish introducing the rest of our team members after you're done, Judge. Thank you, Tim. Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to just highlight the work that we're doing here uh, in Douglas County with our accountability courts, treatment courts. Um, as you know, I am the presiding judge of our mental health court, which we refer to as our HOPE court, uh, helping our participants in the cycle. Uh, I've been presiding over this court now since 2017 when I took the bench. Uh, and I can tell you that we have uh, witnessed the impact that this program, this court, um, has had on the account of, uh, on the community um, as well as uh, the court system as a whole um, because we have been able uh, to see um, our motto um, realize uh, helping our participants in the cycle uh, and actually seeing our participants go on to do amazing things uh, hearing the stories of uh, their successes um, and uh, thank you so much, not only for your continued support uh, since we started this program, uh, but thank you for providing this space uh, so that we can share it and that we can continue sharing it uh, with the community so that they can see uh, the amazing work that's being done in the court system and how the accountability court um, affects uh, everyone in the community. Uh, thank you again, thank you for your support. And um, uh, we look forward to all the wonderful work that will continue being done. All right, thanks, Tim. Thank you, Judge Adams. 
Uh, I've shown you our staff members that are actually here. We also have team members that meet multiple times a month uh, to discuss cases and talk about the best option for our participants moving forward. We have several of those people on the call. I wanna just reach out and let them uh, give their moment. Uh, first will be a few DCS officers, Department of Community Supervision. They are not only assigned to our courts, but are integral partners in making sure that we can work out the situation our participants find themselves in. Because drug court, hope court, veterans court, opioid court, it's commonly not the first time that someone's been in custody or in trouble. So we're constantly dealing with parole, probation terms, and now we're bringing in the accountability courts, a new set of terms for somebody. So first off, I'm going to ask for uh, Ms. Fuller if she would like to say anything or can say anything. I'll give her just a second. Good morning, everyone. I am Kamisha Fuller and I am over the Veterans Court. Um, basically, like um, Tim said, we just answer any questions that deals with their parole and probation side. Um, sometimes it's a lot of confusion and we just help them get through it successfully in the best way that we know how. Thank you very much. Excellent job. Uh, Miss Money, are you with us this morning? I am, I'm in the office, but I'm with you. Good morning. She is in the office this morning, so I won't ask her to say any more. She's there at the front desk working and double tasking. So it's very good to see you this morning, Officer Money. I believe that Mr. Kolsky is with us from the Public Defender's Office. Craig, are you there? I am. Thank you, Tim. And thank you to everyone else. Um, my name is Craig Kolsky. I'm with the Public Defender's Office. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be on all of these teams, so I just want to echo what everyone else is saying. Um, thank you so much for, for having us and giving us the attention on these very important issues. A couple of people uh, that aren't able to be with us this morning is Ms. Ebony Phillips. She is from the District Attorney's Office. Uh, she is our DA assigned to drug court, but I believe we do have Ms. Dawn Scotland with us from the Solicitor's Office. Ms. Scotland, your microphone is muted. There I go. Okay. So good morning. I'm delighted to be here. And uh, I just want to thank everyone for the opportunity to be involved in the DUI drug court and state court. It is an awesome program. I have witnessed the participants testify to how much this program has helped them to reunite with their families and to gain employment, um, housing, and again, to just be productive members of society with the support of the DUI drug court team. It's, it's an awesome program. And I just wanna say thank you for the opportunity to be a part of it. I am the accountability court um, prosecutor for the state court program. Thank you, Ms. Scotland, for those words. I appreciate that. Uh, finally, there is a Ms. Keisha Sledge is with the Veterans Administration. She is our uh, justice officer for the VA, Department of VA. She's not with us this morning. Dr. Lynn Tankersley from Mercer University is also our researcher. Uh, both of those are integral parts to the work that we do every day. Uh, I will turn the floor over to uh, Chief Judge Bo McLean and allow him to give us our closing remarks, sir, if you're ready. Well, good morning, Board of Commissioners and citizens of the community. Thank you. I wish we could have shown you everything that we had prepared for you, uh, but we don't have the time to do that. Uh, somebody asked me, uh, Bo, the other day, what do you think your dying words will be? And I, and I said, I think my dying words will be, I wish I had more time because there's so many good things we can do and so many people we can help if we just had more time. 
today I, I wanted to keep a promise to Madam Chair to show you who we are and what we do. I don't know that we've ever had the opportunity to do that over the last several years. I think you've seen that we have an excellent team, uh, a, a more diverse team than you probably find anywhere. And that's because we reach out and get the best. If you listen to what some of our folks said, many of our folks came from other places. KB, we call Kenneth Britton KB. Uh, he had a long career in probation. Me and Mr. Pruitt have been trying to get him to work with us for years. Uh, Karen Alexander had a long career with uh, misdemeanor probation. We had our eye on her for years. Uh, everyone on our team is someone that we picked because we knew that they would do a good job, but more importantly, we know that each of them care. In the accountability courts, let me just quickly say for the public who probably has no idea what we even do, we take people who are entering the court system, either as juveniles uh, because of, uh, of a crime they've committed as a juvenile, or they're entering the court system because their children have been taken into foster care, or they're entering the court system in state or superior court because they've committed a criminal offense. And we realize and know that substance abuse drives their behavior. And so we give these folks a second chance to participate in court supervised treatment that includes drug testing, one-on-one -on -one counseling, group counseling, curriculum, surveillance by law enforcement officers, curfews, payment of fees, and other things to help get their life back on track. In Superior Court, the program lasts anywhere from 18 to 36 months. In my court, if you graduate, all charges are dismissed and you're released from custody. And that is an incentive for every person who enters the system to be able to come out of it with no conviction, no sentence, and no prison. So what we do is we take people who are going to be jailhouse lawyers and we give them an opportunity to earn a college degree, which many of our participants have earned. We give people an opportunity to, instead of to live in prison, to live in a home that they purchased, which one of our graduates purchased a home recently uh, in Harrelson County where he's going to live. Instead of uh, fleeing the police because you don't have a driver's license, we help you get a driver's license. People in our program are reunited with their families. People in our program who would have died of an overdose get to live. And when people judge the drug addict, they don't realize that that drug addict, when she was 12 years old, was raped and suffers from post-traumatic stress syndrome. And so she self-medicates. Or when they judge a male drug addict, they don't realize that he grew up with drugs everywhere around him. And when his father went to prison, what his mother did was light up a crack pipe and hand him the pipe. So we work to change that so these folks can have productive lives. And if you don't have a heart for them, those who are watching, if all you have is judgment and condemnation, let me say this then. I'll appeal to your logical side. It costs less money to provide these services than it does to put them in jail. So we're saving you some money with what we're doing. We could not do this work with the excellence that we provide, but for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. You guys help us pay for everything that we do. We've been very successful in getting rather large amounts of money from the federal and state government. But without you, we would not have the success that we're having. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And one more thing, uh, in case you have questions, I want you to have the opportunity to ask them. None of us have to do this. I don't know if you realize that, but Judge Adams and I, we don't have to be accountability court judges. We can just say, nah, I don't have time. I'm too busy. But we do it because we want to. And we want to help people. And we're thankful for the opportunity.
Madam Chair, we yield up for any questions. Thank you so much, uh, Judge McLean, and thank you so much, Tim Pruitt, and all the participants this morning, Judge uh, Harrison, Judge Nurse, and I can name the entire team, but you all know that the Board of Commissioners uh, heard you loud and clear this morning, and we're delighted that you provided uh, an update. And just to give us some insight, not only us, but the citizens of Douglas County of what services are provided in our accountability courts, which I must say, uh, in my opinion, is very much uh, impressive. And thank you, Judge, for indicating that you could be doing something else so that speaks volumes of what you and the judges and uh, the staff, uh, that your commitment and dedication to changing lives is very obvious by the presentations this morning. And please allow me to apologize for the technical difficulty on the, the tapes, but um, I felt that it was still personable that you introduced every member of the team and allowed them to continue to speak. Uh, certainly, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions this morning? I, I have just one, and I'll allow the board, I'll yield to the board first. And it's regarding the Veterans Court, which is very exciting. That's one of our newest courts. And certainly, I had a question uh, for our veteran team. Uh, board of Commissioners, do you have Madam any Chair. questions at this time? Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll be um, as brief as I can be. And again, I want to thank all the judges um, for your efforts. Um, no, you don't have to do it, and you're right, but does it make sense? Is it, is it in the greater good? Um, Chief Judge, we've had this conversation when I first came in office at that time, um, where, you know, why are we giving people 20 years to life? Well, is there not some other alternative sentencing option? And at that time, it wasn't. And is, is there a better way to deal with criminality, uh, sentencing, um, giving people second chances. Um, in 2015, um, you guys recall, I'm at a conference down in Savannah like we were recently, and we're in a room of about 500 people, and we realized as the lady was making a presentation from the state that says, okay, oh God, they're creating these accountability courts, so they're institutionalizing it. I think that came out of Governor Deal and his son out of Hall County. It's a big push, and it was appreciated. Um, and thus, um, Chief Judge, you call, we, I think back in 15, I had my first uh, mental health forum, which I've got my seventh coming up here this week. And I, I learned a big lesson between prevention and intervention. And what you're hearing here to the public and to my peers is, is, is intervention. It's, all right, it's after the fact. Right, but look at, look at, look at this. I mean, and I, I love what I'm hearing because it's more of, and we heard about marketplace ministry. This is workplace ministry. It's you guys' hearts. You care. You, I mean, I'm like, look at this. I'm, I'm okay without seeing the video, but I can, I can hear. So I was good on that. So no, no love lost. But um, just to hear the hearts of, 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 of all the staff, I think, Tim, it was just you when we first started. I mean, that's all I, I, I was aware of. But I know um, Judge Walker was here at that time and, and she had her own, you know, you guys have your own autonomy to a certain extent, but it was, it was, um, it was the beginning of something. And I heard key words in there about what rehabilitation versus debilitation. It goes back to teach them the fundamentals. All right, we, we wanna, before the, we want a primer. But I heard um, that um, one of our coworkers, our co-laborers said, no, you, you gotta give them a primer. Exactly. Right, get ahead of time, like get ahead of it. And um, so, yeah, you can change behavior, but it's after the fact. And you can't save everyone per se, but you, you give them a chance to make their own choice and their own decisions. So I'm, I'm just so encouraged to see that, to look, look at the system, look at this, to your point, judges, I, I didn't even know that y'all have gotten to, to that point of, of support and case management and that, oh, wow, look at this. Look, look, look how this thing is, this, this, this big old tree back here. And look at all these branches, look at all this. And um, just to hear the fruit, and I do want to see the videos and, and see some of the testimonies um, that come out of this. Um, so I just wanted to make that statement. I'm sure this is, this is good. Um, again, um, no problem. I'm, I'm there for support uh, because it's necessary. You know, every, everybody is not evil. Everybody's not evil. Make mistakes. Right? And then you try to cure it and move on. If, if, you know, uh, again, be, be given the opportunity. 
Um, but likewise to my peers, as we can do things to prevent them coming before our judges that and creating an atmosphere in which they're educated on the fundamentals, uh, because education is so key to life. Um, I, I think that'll go a long way. But I just want to make that statement. I have no questions, Madam Chair. This this was this was good. This was worth the time. You guys did well. Um, you came prepared as I know you would. Uh, this is very tight. You guys um, um, congratulate yourselves on what you guys have uh, presented this morning. I know the public was blessed by it to even see it. Madam Chair, that's sufficient. Thank you, and I yield the floor. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other questions or comments, board, or remarks? Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you. I won't be long. I just want to say thank you to all of you who have presented today. Um, you know, it's something when we appropriate, but it's something to see what we appropriate for and what you all are doing and how it's impacting the community. So I want to just say kudos to you and a special kudos to Tim for helping us to work with the CSB. You heard me a year ago and you have made that happen. So thank you, thank you, thank you. When we help each other and we cross connect, we support each other, everyone wins. So thank you to that. And thank you to Judge Bo McLean for your vision. Um, kudos. I yield Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other remarks, board? Okay. I'll close by saying uh, thank you so much for the presentation this morning and your massive uh, body of work that you're producing here in Douglas County uh, in terms of accountability. Just have one question regarding veterans and I'm so excited uh, as a veteran myself, that's why I'm asking the question on behalf of the 5,000 veterans that live here in Douglas County. Can someone who represents the, the, the Veterans Court just give us a, just a quick synopsis of the services that are being provided to our veterans, you know, as it pertains to the court system. So there's some awareness there. It's just something real quick, just a, a Reader's Digest version. And I don't know who you would like to do that, uh, Mr. Pruitt. I'm, I, I think that Ms. Griffin will actually do that. And I'll come in smiling. and clean anything up there that, that she wants me to, but I think she can handle that question all by herself. Okay, Ms. Griffin, you have the floor. Thank you. So we provide um, several services. Um, if you, since you're, you are a veteran and you know that our veteran population, they have a tendency to soldier through and power through and not necessarily um, get the help that they need. And so we connect them with the VA. Um, we have individuals in our program that, you know, have not, have never gotten disability through, um, the veterans and we have access, access um, that resource in allowing them to uh, collect their um, benefits. We partner with just counselors there, um, counselors within our team and collaborate with the CSB to address the, those underlying issues. Um, we have mentors in our community that um, volunteer their times to meet with our veterans and act as a peer support for them. Um, and that we have found to be very helpful. Um, we help find jobs. So we are um, part of a network that sends, you know, employment opportunities. Um, and we actually have two of our veterans that are in our community housing. Um, and it really is life changing for them. So um, Madam, if you ever want to be a mentor in our veterans program, we welcome you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Griffin. You know what, actually, we have a citizen here in Douglas County. His name is Mr. Browder. Browder. He's connected with myself and Commissioner Carthen. He served 20 years, I believe, in the Navy. And of course, he uh, worked his last uh, stint of, uh, his, of his career in the, the VA Center, the Veterans Administration. And he is so anxious to get involved in the community and to help. So if it's okay, I would love to connect you all because he has a lot of energy and he is so committed to making a difference by veterans. So thank you. And I'll make sure that I get with Mr. Pruitt and also you, Ms. Griffin, and provide you with this information and we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you answering your questions. Um, I, before we close out, Tiffany Stewart Stanley just had a brief announcement uh, on my behalf and I know Rick Martin as well. Tell, would you share with the citizens and with the Board of Commissioners what our plans are for that last video? Right 
Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. And I really want to commend the juvenile programs and the accountability courts on such great information. We want to make sure that the citizens can um, see the videos. So we will be placing those videos on the Facebook page, as well as uh, DCTV23. And we will make sure to email out the links to the videos to all users and um, put it in our happenings newsletter. So we want to make sure that the video does get out. Thank you. And again, uh, apologies for a technical difficulty this morning, but the, the, I think the gist of everything was you were here in person and I, I'd rather have you in person than the video. I, we were honored this morning to have you here. All right, well, thank you so much. And uh, we will move on to our next presentation, which is a lost update. Mr. David Good is here. And uh, Mr. Good, you have the floor. And again, thank you so much, all our participants this morning from our accountability courts. Thank you for what you do. Mr. David Good, you have the floor. All right, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, citizens, stakeholders, and administration. Uh, my name is David Good, and I will be bringing you um, the SPLOST updates for March. So there's the revenue in March, and then work uh, through April. And one thing I do want to bring up is that we did have a, a good weekend where we actually on Friday brought in a new uh, fire truck, a fire engine, a ladder truck over to uh, station number one, where we were able to do a wet down service where we had the seniors participate. And then we went right next door and actually pushed the uh, fire truck in. Uh, District One Commissioner Henry Mitchell III was the MC, and remarks were brought by our uh, Madam Chair, Ramon Jackson Jones. Uh, thank you, Rick. Uh, next slide, please. And as I said, we actually do have um, a couple of projects completed. This is the agenda. Uh, fire EMS, and this is really for the citizens. 32% uh, of that is going to uh, is fire EMS, 51% of the SPLOS proceeds is transportation, and the final 17% goes to our parks and rec. Uh, next slide, please. As you see, our finances um, have been very strong. Um, March came in about 524,000 above what uh, February came in. So our March revenue was 3 million. 179,874, and that's compared to the original projections of 2,077,717. Uh, March revenue is the second highest revenues at um, only behind this past December's, which Christmas usually, um, December is usually the month that is our highest in revenue. Um, for the last 60 months, which is uh, splash years one through five, uh, from April of 2017 to March of 2022, um, those that amount is 138,000, dollars And that's um, a, 16, a little bit over 16.47 million above the original projection that we thought we would be here at this time. Um, next slide, please. Now, this is the uh, projection uh, for uh, really the, what we went over in splash year five, which again was from April of 2021 until um, March 31st of 2022. Um, and the part I really want to point out is that this is the first year where our lowest month was at 2.6 million. That was our lowest. Our highest month was again this past December at 3.26 million. Um, next slide, please. Also, I wanted to mention that we did officially on this paperwork uh, paid off our bond, which was on April first, uh, 2022. So that was the 10th payment and final payment. That amount was $4.182 million. And uh, <laughs> now you're sh we're showing that we did take delivery of a fire engine, uh, which is also known as a pumper truck. We did a soft reception of that vehicle over at fire headquarters. Um, the fourth district, Commissioner Ann jones Gardner was there as this fire truck will be going to uh, fire station number eight out in Merrill Lake. As mentioned um, earlier, we did have the back in end ceremony at fire station number one, where we were able to see the brand new bay doors, which was paid by SPLOS funds at a cost of $13,335. Uh, and this is, this is all part of about over 55 completed projects that we have done through the SPLOS. Uh, next slide, please. And this is a picture of the uh, pumper truck fire engine over at fire headquarters, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we will be having a ceremony welcoming that fire engine into uh, fire station number eight out in Maryland. Next slide, please. 
Uh, these are the actual active projects that we have um, as part of our more than 33 active projects. Um, the first will be a new ladder truck, a, uh, a business item. We're going to talk about the authorization of this. Um, the budget is 600000 for the SPLOS, but the vehicle itself, along with the FEMA grant, will be around $1.73 million. Um, also, we have at New Manchester High School, we have started the right of way plans, so we are in the midst of doing that project. SR5 at Douglas Boulevard, um, that's the budget of $1.2 million. The city will be paying $600,000. Um, we're right now in the right of way phase for the last four parcels to acquire. The estimated lead date is going to be uh, fall of this year. Uh, next slide, please. And as you know, we have been working on putting street lights as part of our safety project. That was one of Madam Chair's uh, big pushes was to make sure we had lighting along the freeways and throughout the county. So we did finally get the GDOT permit for I-20 at Post Road. So the work will begin um, next month in June. We also have, we're currently working with Greystone at SR 166 and Post Road. Um, and you also will see Post Road at Pool Road and Pool Road in Johnst at Johnston Road and Post Road at Banks Mill Road. The SR 166 part will be on a later business um, item. Next slide, please. And that ends it for my presentation. Uh, we have Terry Gable as well as um, department um, leaders uh, to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Good. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions at this time? Yes. Okay, Vice Chair, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Good, um, for that update. Um, again, what you say? We were supposed to come in at 2.07, give or take. Yes, sir. Came in at 3.1. So, yeah, we're, um, um, things are solid. I use my words carefully. They're solid. And um, again, um, Mr. Good, how much did we project that this boss would do initially? Total. Um, uh, the full amount was 140, a little bit over 147 million. 147 million. Right. And right now we're at 138. Yes, sir. And what do we project um, us to come in at, at the end of next year? Um, after we did the uh, reforecast uh, at the end of la late last year, we was projecting 171 million. And that's what we are projecting for. Right. 171 million. That, that, this is sales tax. This is important. The, the, an important tool to you use is this, this special purpose, but it's still a sales tax spread and it gives you capacity to get things done that you're normally property tax can't withhold you can't withhold volatility right you need that to be steady but i i just wanted to highlight um right now steady um and so we've gotten some work that historically has not gotten done state of good prepare we're working on that list so my question then becomes my second question beyond the amount is what happens with um this time next year, what happens when the SPLOS is discontinued? Do we turn off the penny? How do we pay for things going forward? Like what, when you got projects that are in queue, I heard you say what, 32 active projects, give or take? Yes, sir. And I'm thinking like, okay, so based on my understanding, they all ain't gonna finish in one year and five months and two weeks. How does that work? Can you give me some insight, you or Terry, how does that problem? Will we continue on and finish what we started? Or is, is it being suggested by the administration that at some point you're going to come to us and tell us that we got to cut off these projects on behalf of the citizens? Talk to me. Okay. Well, one thing that I do know that I turn it over to uh, Terry Gable is that right now I know we have uh, what's called PAYGO money. Uh, PAYGO money right now is at forty million. So as we continue collecting all the way up until um, March thirty first of twenty twenty three, those those dollars will still become uh, will still be encumbered. We'll still be using those dollars, and so I believe that's where part of it's coming from. Uh, Terry, can you provide more insight? Yeah. So we, if we collect, you know, this is back up to the original number, the one forty seven, and we, you know, we had a, an original priority list that we've been working off of from the very beginning, and we've been managed managing the funds to that. If we uh, and there were some projects below the line, as the as the board knows, uh, and that was part of the management of the funds and the projects. Now, as we've moved forward, as David said, 
we are projecting the funds to come in uh, closer to 170 million. Um, and if we, as we get closer to the end of the year um, and we see those monies coming to a reality, um, we'll, it'll, it'll certainly help us in the planning process. We've already started some projects, uh, uh, parks and also fire. Um, we, you know, we, we did a reforecast based on projections and so far we're needing those. So commissioner will have projects ready to go. Um, and we also working currently on projects in design that, uh, that we'll be using some of that reforecast money if we come in above expectations. So it's a matter of managing each, each month and it'll certainly, yes, we'll have projects that will go into uh, next year um, with no doubt the fire station nine will go the construction on that right now is not anticipated until next uh, December of 23. Uh, we'll have transportation projects going into 23, obviously, uh, Lee Road being uh, one of them. And uh, but we, um, the the 2016 splash dollars do end March 1st, so that'll be the that'll be the end of the collections for the for the 2016 splash program. And at that point, we'll have what we have. Um, and I think Dave and I we've pretty got a got, I think, a real good um, forecast of what uh, what we're shooting for. Um, but again, we're managing the program to the original 147. And that's what we've done from the beginning. Um, and, and trying to take into account uh, the, the reforecast also in doing some planning as we move towards the end of the program. No, I appreciate that. And, and it's duly noted that you said 40 million, right? Yes. The payo is currently 40 million. Yes. Yep. All right. That, that, that's good enough. So it, it, this is important. And I'll close with this is um, again, we're in an unprecedented times. Uh, we recognize the congressional involvement um, during this pandemic has helped sort of in, inflate a little bit of everything. There is cash in the system. Um, um, it's once in a hundred years. And it's important that we don't misinterpret the sign of times um, that, okay, guys, this is this won't be sustained forever. All right, so here's my challenge to the administration. You have 40 million. You got 20 million, 20 million in federal. With, um, what projects are in queue and how are you managing? And again, one more time, I give it to you guys. You guys have done an excellent job in this floss. Oh my goodness. Oh, just, this is rolled. Okay. Right, you rolled it. Just, this is how you manage projects. Seamless, every month, accountable, every month. Know what the design is, what, what development is, what definition is, what discovery is. I mean, straight, solid methodology, pay attention, those who are listening. That being said, um, um, I, I don't want to be reading the newspaper, in my, in my case, 10 years from now, and we sit on 40 million, or we sit on 10 million. We said no one million. And so while Terry, thank you, you have held to the contract, you've held to the letter that says that you won't like, look, this we managed to the 147. Now look, I don't, at 30, y'all can tell me what y'all want me to do with this. But to my peers, we need to be mindful like guys. Are we gonna cut it? You can set in motion 30 projects with 40 million and be stuck and never fulfill it. So it's almost like you've got to refine it down. Like, okay, guys, but what should be the priority of the priorities? Uh, and be thoughtful about it versus spawning. This is like, okay, guys, you ain't gonna have no 40 million on the backside just to keep this stuff going if you're at different stages of completion. So we don't wanna set ourselves up. I think that's the time. We'll have this conversation probably next month sometime where we can sort of uh, you know, give direction to the administration. This is really to my peers. Let's be thoughtful, guys, as we, you know, as you guys take your positions uh, for the future on how we manage um, the existing um, um, work that needs to be done, but things has also had been planned. So I'm sure it's more of that just to, to set a framework for um, future discussions. I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other remarks, board? I see Commissioner Guider. You have the floor, Commissioner. Commissioner Guider. Okay, I had a little trouble unmuting. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, and 
Terry or, or David or maybe Chief uh, Jolivet, could y'all give an update on the ambulances and where they're being placed and any future ambulances that's on the, already on the table? Just update us on ambulances, please. Um, Chief, I'll give you first first shot at that if you if you don't mind. I, I can give an update on numbers and and where we're currently at, but uh, Chief, you want to speak on that first? Yes, I'll speak quickly on it. Uh, right now, we've taken it before the, uh, of course, it's been before the board on the reforecast on our response list. We take it before the EMS committee and uh, we have the green light to go ahead and uh, pursue four more additional ambulances. So we are, we are uh, working with that as we speak uh, to secure four more ambulances. As y'all know, our, our ambulance calls have gone up and uh, so those new ambulances are gonna be a, a great asset to the citizens. So as far as the ambulances, we have four that we are pursuing. And uh, the reason why For we're trying to get- Which locations, which locations? Uh, as far as location, uh, we don't really have a designated location for them. We, 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 we're using our vehicle replacement plan. And uh, so we're, we're just going to be replacing them uh, based on that plan. But we'll be able to put that out, you know, uh, where, we, where they actually go. We do have the newest one went to uh, Station 8 out in Mirror Lake and uh, replaced the old ambulance unit out there. So we do have a brand new one out there. Uh, Station, do they have an ambulance out there? Winston. Yes, ma'am. Do they have an ambulance located there? Four. Yes, ma'am, we do. Okay, because someone Station said we didn't, and I thought, I think we do, but <laughs> I couldn't yes, swear to it. A, yes, ma'am, we have a, like a, Things a kind of moving. Um, okay. Um, I noticed uh, someone uh, pointed out the about the splash, the advertisement or whatever, or the education. Someone needs to kind of check the grammar. Uh, it starts out like it's talking about the 2016 splash, and then it goes to to be to the future. So you might want to change that or, or correct that. I don't know who's doing that. So. I think it was on the website. So, okay. Uh, I just wondered about the ambulances. Uh, but every, when are you going to get the re, uh, quick response vehicles in play? Do you know? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we don't have the exact date, but uh, they are, they are been ordered and uh, we're just waiting on the, uh, the manufacturer to make sure you have everything ready so we can, get those. So we're, we already start to position our personnel to getting ready for them. And we're putting up temporary uh, QRVs, but we're, it, it should be in the near future. I'll get the exact time, but it's been with all the different uh, issues that have been happening as far as logistic wise, but I, I'll get, try to get, kind of narrow it down. They had mentioned November, but I'll try to see if they have any updated information on that. And could you update us on the fair play? Uh, station renovation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma the fair play renovation is in phases, and right now uh, they're going through all the paperwork. It's been approved to do the renovation uh, right at right on the nine hundred thousand dollars, and they're going through all the uh, paperwork now, getting all the permits and, and what have you to get all that started. And then uh, they're going to do it in phases, and and uh, I'll be sending that sending that those phases out to everyone, so they'll know exactly. Uh, the time frame, but it's, it's looking uh, at being done uh, within, uh, Terry, is it 10, 11 months or 12 months on that project? Um, total, yeah, that would be, um, that would be including the design and permits. So 12 months, Chief. So we're so right we on track the, with it. I'm sorry, uh, do we have the design already? No, ma'am. That was that. That's um, that's part of this this process that we've that we're moving forward with with that with Fire Four with Gordian. Um, it's similar to a state contract, but it um, 
once we, we just gave them and they're looking for a purchase order right now, which we we're, we're rushing through. But uh, once they get that purchase purchase order, they will start to design. Um, but we've already saved a tremendous amount of time with not having to advertise in the design phase and then the construction phase. So it'll be quicker. Um, and once we've already got the contractor basically on board uh, and he's got his own designer, so it'll move fairly quickly, but we'll have uh, about a two month period, Commissioner, um, starting this week. I'm hoping that uh, it'll take them to design it, uh, get the permits for it, and then May, June, July, hopefully start work sometime, actual construction on the building. Um, maybe sooner than that, but around July. Okay, thank y'all for that update. And that's for the people to hear it too. <laughs> I knew some of it, but I wanted to, uh, the public to hear it too. Thank you very much. I yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Geider. Any other response? I saw your hand up, uh, Chief. Talk about it. Is that your hand up by mistake or you need to speak? I just wanted to share just one quick thing about uh, a new fire engine. Uh, we have a team of uh, of our peers going to uh, Braden, Florida uh, this afternoon to do the final inspection on the on the District 2 engine that's coming in. Uh, and that'll be uh, for Riverside District 2 area for the citizens. So hopefully we'll have that engine in uh, within the next as they do the inspection on it, it'll be in uh, within the next two to three weeks. So I just want to share that uh, as part of Mr. Good's presentation. Okay. Thank you so much, Chief. I do want to remind the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County, we, although money is plentiful, we are still dealing with the supply and demand issue all the way from formula, and that's something that's a nationwide crisis. Vehicles are back on back order. Um, appliances for your kitchen, whatever you can think of, furniture. It's a it's a twofold uh, twofold process. We, it feels good to have money, but you know it's impossible to get these orders here. So, Chief, I appreciate you working on those quick response vehicles. I I know every time you see me ask the same question as well. So, I'm just trying to pace pace my patience, uh, and also with the sheriff, uh, he and some of his cars are still not here. So it's just uh, and in all through our departments. Some vehicles that were supposed to be ordered, they're just not here for our code enforcement. So uh, Board of Commissioners, if you could just help prime my patience, I appreciate you as well. I know it's, it, we, I'll uh, put the money on the table, but it's just right now, the supply and demand is just, uh, it's giving us a, a run for our money. But that being said, we're gonna move on if there's nothing okay, else. Madam Chair, just, just let me just, just uh, one little Mitchell, comment. Mitchell, you have the yeah, floor. I'm sorry, my apologies. So I, I just want, David, if you would please, uh, can you, chime in and i may have missed this the where we are how we've done or how well we're doing when it comes to minority businesses and local businesses and all that that penny that what that percentage is roughly now and what we anticipate down the road though so can you just kind of give me a debriefing on that i'm um, sure uh, i think so uh, we're uh, probably around uh 80 hovering around 83 uh, percent on active projects uh we still make sure that we reach out to different companies um, in, in uh, minority status, making sure we let them know that they can get their DBE certification for free through um, GDOT if they, are, if they are in most of the state. And then uh, MARTA if you are in Atlanta, Fulton County, um, DeKalb County, and I believe uh, Cobb County. And so we make sure that we do that. Um, there was uh, not too long ago, a company did a, um, an event over there in your district uh, where they were talking about how to do business. So we made sure that we got them information from Ms. Amon's office, um, the Kimberly office, so, so they know how to do business. And then we gave them uh, some DBE information to make sure they knew how to become a DBE and what they would have to do, make sure they meet those qualifications. So yeah. that, that's what we're um, doing. And again, we are doing very good uh, right now when it comes to the SPLOS proceeds. The last thing I wanted to mention that um, in the fifth year SPLOS, we brought in our highest which is at 33,429,076. Um, so we are doing, uh, we are doing uh, fairly well. Good. So, so do, what is that percentage? And I'm, maybe I'm missing this. What is that percentage of where we are today um, when it comes to DBE? Um, we're at 83. 
83. Okay, that's the okay. Okay. Yeah, 83 that's, percent that's of active projects. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty darn good. Okay. All righty. Good enough. Thank you. That's all I wanted. I, I'll yield back my shit. Welcome, Commissioner. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay. Any other questions for <clears throat> Director Good, our communications director for SPLOS? Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Good and Mr. Gable. Thank you so much. Y'all are doing a phenomenal job. This is huge. Um, thank you, manager. Okay. Thank you. We're going to move on board of commissioners tomorrow. Please be prepared to approve or deny our, um, approval of the minutes accordingly. We're going to move on. We have tab number four, which is a public hearing tomorrow. Public hearing to consider amending section 14-72C zones prohibiting trucks with more than six wheels. The county would consider adding all portions of the following roads, Johnston Road, Poole Road, Tyson Road, Chapel Hill Road, Lee Road, Mount Vernon Road, South Sweetwater Road, Post Road, Riverside Parkway, and Malone Road. Uh, Director Valentine, if you could just brief the board quickly on what this public hearing will tell tomorrow. Yes, uh, thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, the, um, the ordinance uh, prohibits uh, on certain roads determined by the board, um, trucks from cutting through. Um, they are allowed if they have business within the road within businesses fronting on that road or in that general area. Uh, trucks are allowed to use um, all county roads for local deliveries and if they're sighted. Otherwise, they are restricted for traveling on county roads only to those roads that are designated as state routes. And those roads are essentially uh, the, the state route system uh, and the US 78 or Veterans Memorial. Uh, the, the ordinance um, requires that, that um, we enumerate which roads are going to be on that list. When we had the last discussion, that was essentially based on a number of things, one being input from commissioners who uh, get uh, complaints, receive concerns, complaints from their constituents, and also um, we get calls on a, on a periodic basis uh, from, from residents complaining about cut through truck traffic. And that's what this is intended to. And uh, we started out with a list of the 10 roads, Madam Chair, that you uh, listed. There is another one that we would need to consider, and that is Huey Road. Uh, you may recall a couple of years ago, there was a, a, a truck um, bypass road, if you will, that was uh, instituted to facilitate the State Route 92 construction project. Well, those roads are no longer needed as a detour for that project because it's essentially being completed. And therefore, uh, if it is the will of the board, uh, we would add Huey Road, a, a small segment of Huey Road uh, on the list. So it'd be the 10 that you enumerated uh, plus Huey Road will be for consideration tomorrow. I will have a, um, a graphic a map displaying where these roads are, and um, uh, there will be an ordinance uh, amendment, uh, a resolution amending the ordinance that would be in conjunction with the public hearing. So um, that's, uh, I'll leave it there and open it to any questions if there are any. Any questions board for Director Valentine? Any objection board to Huey Road being placed on this list for tomorrow's uh, legislative voting meeting? Any questions or concerns or objections? Okay, being none. Okay. Uh -huh. You have the floor transportation committee chair. Yes, thank you. No, I have no problem with the, um, concurring with adding Huey Road. Um, you know, when you're in here, you might as well knock it all out. So I have no problem with that last minute um, insertion. That, that being said, um, um, we'll have the hearing tomorrow. Can we make sure we're prepared to have somebody from uh, public safety? How will we enforce this? Um, to my peers know, we, we get these phone calls and trucks are cutting through. And so while we're um, drawing the lines in essence about what you should not do, don't go down this road, I get we're laying down the foundation, how do we enforce that um, and, um, and, and communicate that accordingly? Um, so I'm hoping that during the hearing, you're going to talk about signage, you're going to talk about enforcement, 
and things of that nature. So if the public can hear this since it's a public hearing. Yes, as uh, Chair of Transportation, I have insight, but, but this is, the public needs to hear this. So um, that, Director Valentin, can you sure, or Madam Chair, can y'all ensure we have somebody from public safety, like how, how are we coordinate, like um, Mr. Carthen stated earlier, we gotta work, work across agencies, we gotta be aligned, we gotta have things synced up. So Madam Chair, can I ask that to be fulfilled tomorrow, please, as part of the public hearing? We have somebody on standby to, to answer questions, please? Absolutely. Thank um, you, Madam Chair. Director Valentin, if we could just get in touch with someone, public safety to yeah. see what their uh, measures would be to help uh, um, mitigate the problem that we have with truck traffic and also to over some oversight. Right. Okay. Whatever we need to do. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, just if there's a, a resource issue, if there's equipment that's needed to enforce, or we may not just talk about that we need to enforce it, but come up with a solution, come up with some options perhaps for, for the board to, to begin to consider as this thing rolls out accordingly. All right, I yield, Madam Chair, thank you. Okay, any other remarks, board, or questions, concerns? All right, thank you, Director Valentin. We look forward to the public hearing tomorrow. Thank uh, you. Deputy County Administrator, do you have anything to add? I uh, just want to yield the opportunity if you had anything for the board. Thank you, Madam Chair, no, not to, uh, not to, uh, Item number four, no ma'am. Okay. Anything, it isn't a space on here for county administrative business, but you are. Oh, I've got, yes. So, yes, ma'am. I do have one item there, and it is for the extension of um, the contract for uh, financial support uh, with Mrs. Rosalind Miller. We are going through the end of the year, Madam Chair, from August to December 31st as we continue our search for our chief financial officer. Um, uh, as you can see there, it's about eight, $8,700 per month uh, for the next five months. Uh, it'll be a total of forty three five. Okay. All right. Board of Commissioners, and that's tab number five. I'll read it again. Approval of the contract amendment number one with uh, Terminus Municipal Advisors, LLC, for governmental, I mean, for government financial support services, term August 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022 in the amount of $8,700 per month to be funded from the finance personnel budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents to, uh, pending final legal review. Any questions, board? And, yes, ma'am. Okay, director. I'm sorry. <laughs> Vice Chair Barossa. I'm fine. I'm, 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 I made you. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. No, um, uh, to that point, um, um, Deputy, um, with this agreement, um, is this all encompassing? Terminus has been involved in three or four aspects of the Board of Commissioners, not only running point for us and, and filling in the gaps as it relates to um, our uh, daily financial operations as a CFO or an interim director, whatever you want to call it, um, as well as providing um, thought leadership around our um, potential SDS spouses coming up, as well as work that had been done in the past regarding the TAD. Um, just like on the, we had legal opinions that were written, there was financial opinions that were involved. Is that included in this or is the county attorney around to speak to this? I just want to make sure as y'all open this up, let's make sure you clean it up um, and make sure everything is, is clean going forward. Can somebody speak that, to that? That, that, that? that is correct, Vice Chair. Um, uh, Ms. Miller will continue to operate as she has in the previous months with the included services that you just mentioned. This would all go through the final, uh, through the uh, uh, December 31st of 2022, unless we ex uh, uh, determine at that time that we need to extend it uh, from that point. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm trusting, I want to make my words clear again, for her role as CFO, which is separate than the, 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 this, uh, a one-time moment, which is the analysis on the tag, which is separate from um, SES lost. Those are three separate things in my mind. And I'm very focused on what I'm asking. So county attorney, do you hear what I just said? It's more for him to make yeah. sure it's captured and caught by. Yeah, yes, I do, Mr. Vice Chair. There is an item at the end of the agenda today. It's a proposed contract with Terminus to for them to provide support service to the county in connection with the SDS lost and SPLOS um, projects. 
So that that um, that proposed agreement uh, will be discussed at, at that point on the agenda. All right, so that's one. The second one is this current one, which is two, which is for Director Miller. My third point was um, um, work that had been incurred on behalf of TAB, which is the master plan, the falls, the trails, whatever we're calling Lee Road, is that captured somewhere? And the only reason I bring this up, this has nothing to do with you. We, we were at the same point last year where Terminus did work on our behalf, went almost three, four months without payment. I can't let that happen again. So what you're hearing out of me is that, okay, are y'all paying attention? It's not you, but it's just, I'm sensitive to that. When people do work on our behalf um, and they're not being recognized. So is that somewhere buried or codified accordingly? I, I'm not sure there's a separate contract for work on the TAD. I do know that uh, Terminus has incurred some expenses, um, which I think is going to be at some point presented. Um, and as has uh, our firm, those, those expenses and costs would be subject to reimbursement uh, to the county uh, from TAD proceeds, um, either during a bond issue or on a pay-go basis. Uh, I'm not sure there's a separate contract that covers it. I don't believe if there is, I'm not aware of it. I think that that's just mm -hmm. been done as a part of All right. so the just a pass transactions. So as a pass through from him for work that's been done, in other right. words, the, we pay him and we get reimbursed. We, the county gets reimbursed from the TAD once it comes online and goes, but you, you, surely you're not saying that he has to wait until the TAD is reimbursed to get paid for work he did on our behalf. On no, 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 no. I'm simply saying that, you know, as you stated, it, it would be anticipated that that those are, those expenses would be presented for payment by the county and then reimbursed through through um, through the TAD um, at, at some point later when the TAD proceeds come online, they are re reimbursable, and I think the same would be uh, applicable to legal fees incurred with respect to the TAD. So they would be presented and paid by the county. That's that's what I think is anticipated, and that's how I understand it will be handled. Nope, you county attorney, you got this. I just want to make sure that the administration and the legal were lined up. It sounds like you guys have got this. I'm good. No further response is necessary. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other questions or concerns? Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy County Administrator. We're going to move on to our business items. Board of Commissioners, tab number six. Approval of the change order number one on the contract with the Corbett Group LLC for construction of the Maxim Road sidewalks improvement project in the amount of $17,853.75 to be funded from the 2016 SPLOST funds allocated to the project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Uh, Director Valentin, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh... We uh, ran into some rock on that project, and uh, initially it, it appeared to be much more extensive than we've been able to limit uh, by adjusting some things. Uh, the the uh, uh, expenditure that we're going to have to get into, which is above and beyond the original contract, uh, but um, when they started excavation on the storm sewer line, uh, they run into rock and, and originally we were hoping to avoid it altogether. So that's what this is. Um, it's been uh, limited to that is what that what is absolutely necessary to get that sewer line in in that area. Thank you so much, Director Valentin. Any questions for work? Yes. <laughs> Vice Chair Robinson. Thank yeah. you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, this is one of those um, operational SASH safety projects. Um, Again, it's something that um, uh, with the convergence of vehicles and pedestrians, um, sometimes um, they get a little too close and impact happens. Um, and so in this case, we've got this project here. Director Valentin, I was going down the street recently and I could realize uh, going down Maxim that the sidewalks only go so far. So are the sidewalks going all the way down to old Alabama um, or are they, talk to me and I understand topography, I understand trees and whatever, 
but explained for the public because it doesn't go all the way down to old Alabama like I thought on one side versus the other side. So talk, talk, explain what happened and how will I get across the street if I go down one way, now I got to cross the street over to go down the rest of the sidewalk. Talk to me about this design, please. Uh, yes, the, the, there are sidewalks on both sides of the road from uh, Max, uh, from uh, Thornton Road along Maxim to about uh, Tree Terrace Boulevards, where I recall uh, there, the, the sidewalk that would be on the east side drops off. Uh, but the sidewalk uh, project that we've been discussing, this is on the west side of the road, and this one will connect all the way to old Alabama. So anybody from um, the east side, perhaps uh, shopping at the Kroger or other businesses in that area would get to the signal at uh, uh, Tree Terrace and cut across to the other side. And then they will have a sidewalk that would take them all the way to old Alabama. Yeah, it's sort of like we get a boundary wars. All right, I got it, Dr. Director Valentin, I'm good. Madam Chair, you. thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, any other questions for Do Director Valentin? Okay, not, we're gonna move on. Tab number seven is authorization to execute an MOU and G, uh, with GDOT in connection with the roadway lightning, uh, lighting at uh, State Route 166 and Post Road intersection and authorize the chairman to sign uh, all related documents. Director Valentin, you are here again for this long awaited moment. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This, uh, this is um, another one of those permits that we've been trying to get uh, out of uh, GDOT and uh, get the utility company to install the, the, the lights. Um, for some reason, as we've discussed previously, they, they will not issue a blanket permit for all our, our entire list. So we've done about four of these so far. This would be, this would be number four, I believe. And uh, there'll be more to come, but but this is welcome news. Uh, as soon as we get this one approved by the board, we'll be able to get the permit, get the installation underway. Very good. Board of Commissioners, any questions Questions for uh, Director Valentin? Okay. All right, thank you for sharing the good news, Director. Okay. We're gonna move on to tab number eight, which is authorization to amend correct health agreement to include an increase in an amount currently being negotiated due to labor costs as a result of the pandemic and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Deputy Chief Connor from the Sheriff's Office, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, Correct Health handles the inmate uh, care, health care inside our facility. They, um, they've experienced problems with nursing staff. And currently we have about 12 agency nurses. Those are temporary travel nurses that uh, they're having to pay um, almost triple what they budgeted for, for normal employees to the, uh, to the agency. And um, in an effort to try to uh, keep this contract, which the sheriff and I have uh, recently reviewed and checked with some other vendors. Um, there's considerably less than what would we would be if we ended up going with another vendor. And uh, the sheriff has decided to try to uh, continue this contract. It will, the initial contract for 2022 was 2.1 million. And uh, this amendment will amend that contract to a maximum capacity of 551,000 which is um, going to put us at uh, what 2.6, um, which is still uh, some quotes that we got was around 4 million uh, to do the same services from other uh, vendors. So um, in an effort to keep them in the cost savings and uh, to, to help them out through this time, like everybody's experiencing, this is what the uh, sheriff is asking y'all to to come together and approve for this amendment. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy uh, Chief Connor. Is our finance director on the, on the line, uh, Rosalind Miller? Are you on the line? 
Good morning. Good morning. And I know, uh, thank you, uh, Chief, kind of for bringing the sheriff's request of that additional, you said 500 and how much was it, Chief? It's a uh, maximum of 550,000 for the okay. remainder of the year. Okay. The, um, we were budgeted 2.5 in that, but that covers all of inmate health care for um, inmates that may go out to the hospital and those costs. So um, I think it will be okay for now, um, but um, it'll leave us about 121000 in excess to cover those other necessities. And there may be a time closer to the end of the year that we may have to come back before the board to address that shortfall. Okay. Uh, this additional cost. Okay. Um, Director Miller, where are we now financially? I believe you have indicated we were already trending on the budget. We may not be. And, and if that excess is available, can you explain to the board what do we have? Yeah. Yes, Madam Chair, we're going to continue to um, take a look at that account. And um, as it gets low or um, there needs to be additional funding, we will um, come before the board and ask the um, board to amend the sheriff's budget um, to make sure that the contract, you know, is covered. But currently it looks like um, we will be fine, but it will be tight. But again, we will take a look at the, um, continue to um, watch over that budget line item. What, what are you trending now? What are, are you under budget by what amount? Just for the boards and clarification. Can you pull that up real quick. Okay. Just trying to get an idea where you are, Chief. Here, we hear you loud and clear. I had an opportunity to visit the sheriff's office the other day to thank all the staff, and then also visited just the inmate quarters and just and and spoke to some of the nurses as well and shook their hands and thanked them for their service. But right now, this is unprecedented time, so I the board. I know we hear you. I just uh, spoke with Rosalind and met with her um, a couple of weeks ago, and she just said we're trending under budget, so I don't want the board to panic, so we, and I wanted to make sure that she could provide that number, but definitely our goal is to make sure that we take care of cost. We will do that. Rosalind, how, how are we looking? Okay. In that line item. It was um, budgeted at um, 2.5 um, million. Currently um, spent year to date is is 998,000. Available is 1.5 million. However, the line item is trending um, high. Um, as of April, spent should be about 33%. Currently, it's at 39% okay. spent. Okay. All right, Chief. I, I noticed on here you didn't have the amount that's being asked, you just have. A general statement use of authorization authorization to amend the correct health agreement today. So you're asking us to amend it today, or what are you asking? Yeah, I'm, make sure my um, yeah, just to approve the amendment with the cap of five hundred and fifty thousand, so that we don't go over that amount. But there's not an actual amount that this amendment is for, other than the cap. Um, and to her and to Rosalind's um, presentation there. Um, we're going to, you know, fall short just with the inmate health care alone, uh, 121,000. Um, so that's going to be in addition to anything uh, else that comes about throughout the year. So um, the, um, the 2.1 is already encumbered. Um, so that's probably some of the reason. I guess she's talking though specifically what's been spent, but that the, uh, the payments we pay them monthly. Uh, so there, there should be an amount encumbered for the initial cost. And then the remainder was there for other uh, issues throughout the year for uh, inmate health care. So it, it, it will fall short 
um, but we don't have to have it right this minute. Okay, certainly I'll yield to the consensus of the board. board any conversation, discussion? Any thoughts? Sure. Vice Chair, you have the floor. All right. All right. <laughs> um, I, I, I look forward to not having to lead all the time here pretty soon. All right. So let's get into this. So, um, what if we do nothing? Our first question. Um, well, the. Uh, let, me the let, me, let me give a thoughts out. Let me give a thoughts out. Let me give a thoughts out. The board is being asked this. So what if we do nothing um, and allow it to run its course and amend later? Um, so I'm I'm torn between, and I've got time between now and tomorrow, and I can change my mind 12 times um, between tomorrow. But um, I, I just want to make sure I'm clear on what we're committing to. And I get the amount. Um, and it's, I, mean, I get inflation. It's how we go about doing it, not what we're doing. It's the how. So this is about structure. So I'm like, well, okay, we've got a budget over there. Are we saying that we're just blessing the sheriff to move money around in his current budget? And it's just, this is just a public acknowledgement of that action from an accounting? Or that's one. Or two, are you asking for the board to appropriate additional money to make up this shortfall? Those are two separate questions. My third point is, okay, so uh, I'd like to know, um, yeah, is there an alternative solution? I heard something about another firm. I, I have to ask my procurement officer, was, is she involved at all in soliciting um, um, a, another firm, or which is, and if she doesn't, and she didn't, I'm okay. I think we're trying to normalize how we do this, but we recognize the constitutional officer power. And if, he, if, if that is the case, that you went out and solicited someone um, based on some criteria, you came back to use that as a, a comparison against this existing contract. Okay, I just wanna make sure I'm clear that, that we're all on the same page on, on how this is happening. Um, Craig Tellis has had this contract, how long, over 10 years? maybe 15, I don't know. Um, I, I think you guys mentioned this before when it came up. And so, and at that time, I believe um, there's, there was expressed satisfaction that we're gonna be watching this, et cetera, no problem. So I'm torn right now whether or not, well, y'all ready to break this up or what? I mean, I mean we're, 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 at, we're sort of being held over a barrel to a certain extent. Do we, yeah, we do, but we ain't gotta do it that way. I mean, I get it, let's pay for what we, but I'm really leaning to you, Chief, and the sheriff say, okay, guys, I mean, let, let, let's explain our position, at least let me explain my position, where the board has options that they can choose however they want to go down their path. But um, I, I want to make sure that we're on the same path. Okay, guys, how do we hedge against this? Because everybody can come at, at, at us with this. This is a broader policy question. It's not about this transaction on the table. We, I mean, that's the work session. We're to work through it. We work through it from a policy perspective, a legislative. We're, we're, not, we're not just here, yes, no. We, we got to work through this. Says, okay, guys, how are we going to deal with this? Um, and, and is there any other contract that's out there that has us subject to this? Because we may want to think about budgeting for it. Everybody's not as big as the sheriff that probably could, could absorb this. But then is there anything else out there that I need to be, that, that we may be exposed to? You don't have to solve it now, but it's just something, and again, I know it's on the table now. Um, I just have to factor in how I see the world. And so um, I, I'm gonna pause on this right now. I'm gonna yield and let my mother peer say something. Um, I just don't have a position right now. Um, and I'm, Chief, you don't have to necessarily respond. It's nothing to defend. It's just something I'm, I'm trying to get my mind around. So Madam Chair, I'm gonna yield for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other response, Board of Commissioners? Any other remarks, thoughts? Okay, Chief, look, I... I, I Madam, okay, Madam Chair. Okay, the floor, Commissioner Carton. Mm -hmm. uh, just, a, just a couple of questions. Um, Deputy Connor, how, um, how long do you think it will take before you all know the final numbers? Because I see it's, it's 
I, I'm assuming is still being negotiated with what that final number will be for this company. No, this is <clears throat> this is an amendment and the contract actually um, it allows for a um, a refund of any vacant positions mm -hmm. as well as compensating the difference between what was budgeted uh, for the what they're actually paying. So they're going to uh, do it quarterly and and, and figure out the. Um, the calculations. So we really won't know what it's going to cost us because it's going to be very fluid uh, until we get to the end of the year, at which time it's not to exceed the 550. So is it that we are amending the contract but not the budget per That's se? Correct. That's correct. At this time, we're only asking that we accept the amendment um, and approve that um, it could be an additional up to 550,000. Uh, we're not asking for the budget to be amended at this time, although we know that it is going to be coming down the road. Um, it's, it's obvious that, that, that there's going to be at least $121,600 uh, deficit in that line item, including anything that transpires with inmate health care. Um, for the remainder of the year. So um, it's, it's going to be a sub pretty substantial number. Um, and I guess there's, there's several questions out on the table. I'll, I'll try to, if you, you have more, I'll try to explain that, but it kind of goes into some of the other things that, that I've taken notes from, from uh, Commissioner Robinson. Okay, got you. Um, hmm. So in the meantime, what 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 else is is the department looking at doing? And and answer this if you can for me. Uh, how many inmates are we talking about that that this covers? Do you know offhand? The the, the contract um, covers up to eight hundred inmates at any given time. Uh, if we would go over that number, then, then it's uh, like $1.73 a day per inmate that's over. But this is for the, this is for the entire facility and their mm -hmm. health care in-house, in uh, okay. mental health, um, you know, just uh, any doctors, dentists, anything mm -hmm. like that, is, it covers that cost. Got you. How many inmates do we currently have housed at the facility? I haven't looked at the number today, but it's probably around 730. Okay, so we, 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 <laughs> we're at that number, huh? We, we, we aren't that far off. Okay, got you. Okay, and can you tell me this? How, how are we looking with um, uh, using other services like CSB for some of those services, such as our mental health. Are we, are we even considering doing those types of things or utilizing them in, in certain aspects or has that even been a thought? We've had several meetings with the, the director over there, uh, uh -huh. Lightfoot. Um, uh -huh. Lightfoot, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, we've, uh, we're still waiting for a response from him. Uh, we've had oh, okay. several meetings, several conversations, and the last one uh, we had, we were we were ready to get going, and still ain't heard nothing back. Okay, well, since Madam Jones, she's uh, she's shaking her head. She's sitting like, on that board, so I'm pretty sure she yeah. she will handle that for you, because because. Mm -hmm. That's another entity that we support as well as the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if we can not duplicate services, it, it'll help us all out in the long run to, to stretch the dollars further. But I appreciate you, Chief Connor, and I, I'll wait for you to, to kind of get, get us some of those other answers uh, from um, uh, this morning and, um, and we'll go from there. But I understand it's, a, it's just an amendment to the contract and not the budget at this point. Thank you for the update. Yeah, and and to, to kind of piggyback off that, the the, the deal with the the, the board, um, the CBS, is it CBS, CB, CSB, CSB, mm -hmm. um, they were looking at follow up services after they're released from jail to try to um, 
if, if they stay on their medicine and, and or have med, mental health um, uh, visits, and it, it kind of helps with the recidivism because usually it's when they get off their meds and they're having issues and delusional thoughts that we end up having to intervene. Again. And so mm -hmm. that's, um, you know, that's where they were looking at coming into play and, and we welcomed them with open arms. And like I said, we've yet to, to, to be able to have any kind of uh, relationship with that. The, um, and continuing on, um, asking about the, uh, the other ones, uh, Commissioner Robson asked, what if we do nothing? Um, we've been, we've, I've been told by uh, Dr. Musso that he can not continue to sustain a loss. And if he has to, if we're not able to sign this amendment as of all his other facilities are done, then he's, pre he's prepared to give us a 60 day notice and pull out of our jail. Um, we, we have a, um, a um, trying to think of, it's a, uh, my mind just went blank, a proposal to go out um, that we prepared, but we were trying to, we we're trying to kind of get an idea of what the health care was like at this time in other facilities. And the, uh, the company that we reached out to actually uh, handles all the contracts for the Georgia Department of Corrections and several other um, counties within Georgia, and uh, they come out and took a look, and that's who give us the 3.8 to 4 to 4 million to take over the facility. And of course, we got the oh, everything's good. We don't have any any problems or or any issues with with our uh, staff. We were able to to staff them within a, within 60 days and get them all and uh, give us some references. And when we called around. Um, that's not the information we were given as far as the, uh, they're still using agency nurses. Um, they're just inflating their, their contract to reflect those and they're not having to come back and amend anything. Um, the, uh, the procurement process uh, has not been followed. We didn't really put out for, for the bid or request for proposals, what I was trying to recall just a few minutes ago. Um, we were trying to get an idea of what the health cost is out there before we put that out there. Because once we put that out there and open it up, then our current vendor will be able to align himself with those others and, uh, and cause us to be paying out more money. And our, our, our idea is to try to provide the best service we can for a reasonable amount of money. And uh, if we play, play ball with this guy and this company, uh, we're going to be on the, the losing end. So, uh, I think that based on them and a couple of other places that we kind of looked around at, uh, we're getting a pretty good deal for the services and everybody's experiencing it. And I think that he's just, because we've been with him in the contract for so long, he's been able to, uh, you know, it hasn't went out for bid and, uh, he's kind of, he's probably behind the, the, the game. Um, and he knows it and, uh, one time he welcomed us to put it out for bid because he told us then that he would be able to go up on his prices. So, you know, um, I think that all of them's experiencing issues and it's a decision the board will have to make whether they, you know, what, what route y'all want to take. Cause, um, you know, we just want to try to provide the best health care we can for the inmates while they're in our custody. Thank you, Deputy Connor, for your, for your candor and for, for giving us a, a insight to, to how you guys are, are handling it and seeing it and what you're doing behind the scenes. So I appreciate it. But that, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Carson. Any other remarks? Madam Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman. <laughs> yeah, just real quick. And thank you, Chief, for, for responding. And I, I was patient with that, um, but, but thank you. All right, so we're, again, what, 2.5 million divided by 800 people, it's been about $3,000 a year for inmate. I'm, I'm in my per capita processing loan, right? So we spent about 3,000. And um, and again, if you're dealing with somebody who is big, as you said, um, at the alternative firm, uh, again, it's sort of like oligopolis. They, they just like, what well, they dominate. They can raise, they can play everything. Well, of course, they get it. That's why you want to, um, um, 
create an atmosphere of competition. All right. And so and while I do appreciate the firm that uh, Fred Help that's in there, sort of like we have with our, um, our fellow partners over there in the landfill, uh, Republic who like they served as well. But at some point you have to make an adjustment accordingly, I get it. Uh, so please don't get me wrong, just we're asking the right questions because they need to be asked publicly uh, to make sure we understand what we're looking at. Um, again, I, 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 while I hear, we're, I have no problem with amending contracts with no budget, no problem, but at some point you're gonna have to amend accordingly. Uh, and so it's just it's semantics um, in essence, but I need my finance director to put a pin on this and, and keep up with it. Um, um, so then my last question then is on correct help. How many employees work there? But you, you guys prompted my thought with this whole um, CSB model and duplication. You're like, okay, well, why wouldn't they take that on? I mean, what's the problem? Now, I appreciate uh, there's about There's about 15 full-time employees here. And then um, you've got a mental health doctor, a regular doctor, and a dentist. Um, and then you've got some uh, you've got some uh, employees that do this behind the scenes stuff that may not be stationed here. So, All right. So you got some fixed costs, which is a doctor, dentist, maybe a nurse. So what, maybe eight people on a two million dollar contract. Uh, you have variable costs associated with nurses in and out. It flexes up and down. I guess I don't know if it's fixed or how you guys do that. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I'm just thinking through the structure of this contract. Uh, again, I'm not one way or the other. I'm just asking some right questions, stuff. Just make sure that you guys are okay. But again, we have to trust you um, and that these, these um, are inmates. That, again, we are by law. We must provide. You have to care for. And so I'm not insensitive to that. I just want to make sure, like, are you good? You, you, you sure? And, um, and I appreciate you bringing this before us, Chief. So we're good. Great, great conversation. I'm trying you for I'm all right for now. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair. So I believe um, just by listening to the gist of the conversation right now, you're just primarily asking that the contract be amended. And with the up to amount that you just uh, mentioned, the 535,000, you say it's up to, is that what you're implying, Chief? So we'll yes, have written. The amendment would, would be capped at 550,000. Okay, Clerk, are you capturing this information? It's being said so to be worded accordingly tomorrow. Yes, ma'am, I have it. Okay. And then also, Chief, I'll make sure that uh, uh, Ray Lightford, who is the um, uh, Chief Operating Officer for CSB, get in contact with you because I know we do have uh, the bandwidth to support the needs of the Sheriff's Office. I have four doctors on, on board, uh, mental health physicians that could help uh, provide some services. And then also just, I'll have Ray uh, pick up where you all left off so we can close the loop and then maybe that'll take some of the pressure, but definitely we understand that healthcare cost is rising. And um, uh, Rosalind, I know you will continue to keep your eye uh, on the pulse of this, uh, the uh, situation that we have right now in our healthcare, but definitely yeah. wanna make sure we take care of our um, inmates. Yes. And thank you so much, Chief. Yes, thank you. All right, we're gonna move on board to tab number nine, authorization to award a bid for a new ladder truck to 10, dash eight Pierce in the amount of $1,785,000 utilizing the following funding sources due to increase market value and cost. Number one is federal grant funding in the amount of $1,090,909 from the AFG assistance to the firefighter grant, uh, $400,000 allotted for a heavy uh, rescue vehicle from the 2016 SPLOS funding placing the rescue vehicle below the line for SPLOS funding, and three, $294,091 from existing 2016 SPLOS bonds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Fire Chief Jolivet, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. honorable commissioners, uh, Director Perry, executive team, as well as the colleagues, and also the citizens, last but not least, thank you for allowing us to serve you. Uh, basically, uh, the cost of everything, as we all know, has just gone up. Uh, just an example is I used to pay $15 for a haircut. I paid $40 the other week. I've never known that haircut would be 40 bucks. 
everything has gone up. And in this case, uh, it's our, our ladder truck uh, that we're replacing from the 2019 incident out on I-20. And uh, when they did the initial market value, the federal, uh, the federal AFG grant for purposes, the initial, initial value was at 1.2 market value. And uh, as you see, it had gone up uh, since then. And uh, so we're asking uh, the board for the board consideration to allow us to be able to get this new ladder truck uh, with using the, the, the million dollar, $90,099 from the federal grant assistance, which is, uh, so it's time time consuming, I may mean, not time consuming, have time limits on it. And then that 400,000, as we mentioned, is uh, placing a heavy rescue below the splash line, use those funding uh, for that. And then uh, Mr. Gable, and his team have said that uh, 294 uh, is available from a 2016 squad. So we're just asking the board for consideration uh, to take advantage of uh, uh, securing this new ladder truck to our citizens. Thank you so much, Chief. Board of Commissioners, any questions regarding this request for the new ladder truck? And Chief, can you say specifically where this ladder truck will be going, any particular assigned uh, station? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it'll be going out to um, the. Uh... You hear me, Mm-hmm. I can hear you. Okay. It'll be going out to uh, station number two initially, and then we're trying to get a ladder truck for station nine, okay. the new station nine. So it'd be ladder uh, station two, and then we're working on getting one for station nine as well. And, and also, it helps with ISO and the requirements uh, that require ladder service for our citizens. Just for geographical purposes, where is station two for the citizens? I'm, I'm sorry, station two is out mm -hmm. at the Post Road uh, 78 Bankhead Highway in that area. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, it, uh, it serves that, that community out there as well. Okay. It's the Post Road Bankhead area. Uh, Yes. Thank you, area. Okay. All right, board. Any questions regarding this? Yes, Madam Please. Chair. Okay, you have the floor, Vice Chair. All right, let, let me get right into this one. So we're going to use these different sources of funding. Uh, did this come from a committee? Did the committee make a recommendation to alter the list? They took money from one project, moved that project downstream. No problem. Um, I, I saw how you danced. Okay, that ladder track was supposed to go to station nine. We're going to put it out west. We're going to see if we can get more. Your words were too. Okay. All right, now. Be careful. Be real careful. You don't have to slide a hand because it will be seen. It's like, okay. Yeah, I got down. That, and I'm back to the list. Back to David Good. Back to the burn rate. See, my, my thing is just be upfront. This was, we talked about this, it's like, okay, but how are you gonna mitigate that? Them commercial people out there, out west, that was part of the spots. It ain't after the fact, it is the priority. You wanna advocate after the fact and then try to take resources like, oh, oh, that probably is not gonna play out quite well, but okay, I'm gonna let that stay for the record. You have to communicate. And it's like, oh, wow, look at this. Y'all paying attention to this? Y'all see how that moved? This is what I learned in four terms. It's how things move. Uh-huh. So I'm going to let this go for right now. I just wanted to make my point. Um, when um, you, don't have to do, you don't have to be slick. It's always just put it out in the atmosphere. There's no offense to anybody. It's just like, okay, now. Is how you're framing this narrative. Well, now you know that wasn't a sequence of events. Now, I'm just curious, is, did it come out of a committee somewhere? Where was it codified? What, what, what can happen is that you just come on the floor, we're just going to make it solve. There has to be breadcrumbs. There has to be a paper drop. That's why we have these committees. And was there somebody meeting minutes that y'all, but I get how y'all have staged this. I'm just curious how it got here. Uh, did it come to a committee or did it just come from a, a, a executive? Um, and it's just like, okay, guys, 
And this is the part with, about having things as scheduled and planning that, okay, well, that truck was supposed to go here. We're going to move it. But okay. So I'm back to one more time. What is the priority of the priority list? So that fire station, which was uh, those citizens, those commercial residents were very instrumental in saying, make sure that, look, that's our support. We get it. Our employees work here. Okay, they live here as well. We want that, you know, that fire station. We got too many assets out here. I get people. You got assets you got to put in that four bay truck. And you, you have things to sign. And so you move stuff in priority. Well, it had to wait. You can't undo a priority with, with a, a, a lesser initiative. And then you're like, well, I'm just going to buy some time. Like, God, you, you may not want to run government like that. I may not want to do that. Um, because there's expectations that were set out there. It's going to put pressure on you later when you got to now find that. It's just, it's, just, it's just how you told the story. That's all I did was listen to it. So I'm, it's only what's said here. I have nothing, no paper, no nothing to support anything. Other than it's just the words and what I'm listening to. I'm just like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm let that go for right now. And um, I'll come back to it later. So I'm sure no, no need to respond or anything. Chief, you're fine. We're good. Uh, just It was an observation. It's only because of the words that were set forth. It's what I heard. It's like, oh, that's how y'all doing it? Is that how we rolling now, guys? Okay. I won't do it that way, but I, I, I get it. Madam Chair, I yield. We're good. Okay. Thank you so much. Commissioner Gaidar, I see your hand. You have the floor. Yes, uh, and Chairman, you may want to weigh in. I don't remember them saying where that truck was going to. Uh, I think that was the decision by the chief. Uh, is that correct, Chief? Uh, I'm on the Fire and EMS Committee, but I don't remember let me, us discussing where it was going to be located. But yeah, let, me, let me say it's some good news. Uh, we The truck that's for Station 9, uh, the committee is already... Tell people instead of saying station nine. Okay. Yeah, the new, name the, the new, location. We the we new, don't know the number. I'm sorry. The new station at Douglas Hill and Thornton Road. Uh, the ladder truck that's that's set to go there. Uh, the committee have already uh, approved to go ahead and get that truck. And uh, that that's what I was going to be talking about. Uh, it's it's in a, it's it's a, in addition to the AFG truck that we're trying to get the ladder truck. So that that the new truck for Station Nine, which is Douglas Hill and Thornton Road ladder truck, uh, we've already gotten the green light to go ahead and pursue that uh, through our splash funding, and uh, we're working to uh, pursue a new ladder truck, uh, as well as an engine and an ambulance. And the only only other thing was the heavy rescue that we that had been set aside to go out there. We was asking uh, that it be below the line. Uh, and, and Mr. Gabriel, you can chime in. Uh, he's telling me that that below the line might not even be an issue because of the amount of money that's coming in for the heavy rescue truck. Is Terry Gabriel, can yeah. you speak on that very quick? Yeah, I think the main thing, Chief, is just to make sure everybody understands that, yeah, Fire Station 9, as far as the equipment goes, that money was already budgeted. Um, the money for the ladder truck was in the original budget. Um, so, we haven't changed anything with that. Uh, the FEMA truck was to replace the one that was wrecked. Um, you'll have to clarify the location it's going, but uh, no. And then the the heavy rescue, I don't know the location where that was going to be identified for, but uh, that the location of it, I don't know if it's even come into discussion. Yeah, the heavy, heavy rescue will go out at uh, Douglas Hill, Barton Road. Uh, the, the only thing we're looking at now is just trying to Make sure we have a pathway, uh, not to compromise uh, anything for our new station, Station Nine, uh, which is Douglas Hill and Thornton Road. It's just the fact that uh, the uh, ladder truck. Uh, we just want to show that there was a, a clear path to get there with funding without compromising uh, the project that's already been set up uh, as far as the, the new Station Nine, which is Douglas Hill, uh, Thornton Road. Yeah. Well, if I recall the list, it doesn't say where any of the equipment's going. That's left up to staff. Uh, we wouldn't know where the equipment is needed. We have to rely on staff. And um, 
I thought it was kind of ironic that Commissioner Robinson brought this moving priorities from here to there when they took our senior center and our youth center from the western side that the citizens committee recommended and put it in their districts. So uh, I've got a long memory. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm an elephant, but I don't know. But um, I can bring witnesses to that effect. Even someone from your district, uh, Commissioner Robinson, because she uh, came up to me and said, I can't believe they took your youth center and your senior center away from you on the Western side. So, uh, but anyway, the list does not say where the equipment is to go. That's left up to staff to determine. Is that not right? As far as the uh, trucks and ambulances and stuff like that, we've just approved, uh, the citizens approved a percentage of um, of the splash going to fire and MS and whatever equipment we can buy with that percentage money, the funds is up to the staff as to uh, where to put where to put it. But uh, I don't recall anybody asking me where it was going. <laughs> I, I know during the splash reforecast, uh, there were all that was taken in consideration on the on the equipment for the new station. So that particular piece, I know, unless I'm, I'm interpreted differently, it was uh, part of the reforecast for our new station uh, for that equipment. Mr. Gable? Well, and, the only thing I, that, go ahead. that that was more sp specific is Fire Station 9 and um, the monies that were included in the original budget uh, was for equipment. And that was just for fire now. Yeah, for uh, the new fire station that's being built. And I can understand that because of all the warehouses over there. But I was riding out to Villarica yesterday and I noticed a big warehouse going in there. And we're beginning to get a lot of warehouses along the 78 cor corridor. So, um, you know, if you decide to put a ladder truck in the Winston station, so be it, because you're supposed to know where it's needed. So <laughs> with that, I yield back. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank Gunther. you. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner um, Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. No, I, I appreciate the, the, the narrative, and I, I, I take positions from time to time on this one. I can't let this one go. All right, so the point was... Station nine didn't even have to be mentioned in the opening statement if it was his power. Exactly. If it was just saying it was going to, to station two, then that would have been a mute point. It's just the fact that it's well, station nine and station two, then it's like, okay, so it's the narrative, which was my point. Just the narrative. And it flushed out what I wanted to flush out. Like, okay, did the community have anything to do with it? That answered my question. Yes, we set precedent. My point was just to make my point. You reinforce my point, Madam Dyer. Exactly. You can change the list. You ain't figured me out yet, have you? You walk right into this. My last point as it relates to, right, well, wait, you have to advocate, as they were saying earlier, or something. Nobody stole anything. You weren't out there for six campaigns and, and doing the things to get that spot pushed through, were you? You didn't show up at the meetings, did you? And it was all said and done. Now you want to come after the vote and then try to get citizens to jack up a, a meeting and stuff the ballot and think that it was going to go anywhere other than where it went versus the people who really advocated on behalf of their citizens, that's a false narrative. That's false. That's not how that went down. Oh, you want to show up after the fact that we didn't carry the heavy lifting. Now all of a sudden, like, okay, what, like, well, wait a minute, where were you at before? Anything regarding the citizens, like, no, it's solid. Somebody stole nothing. You could have got something on there, advocate. But don't fake a fake narrative after the fact 
the vote that went forward for the referendum, we created a list, then we're going, then Madam Chair comes on board. I remember, oh, Roy Karen, you and I, we went hard. Oh, oh, the, the, the re-elect Mike, that's about that time, ain't y'all? Right before, right election. So this is just election narrative. It's unfortunate. Um, it's not really what necessary. That wasn't my point. I was just like, Chief, watch your narrative. And you took it to a place that didn't even have to go there. I just like, hey, be careful now. Right, and, and that he doesn't get caught in crosshairs to this very point. So that, that was really my intent, was just asking a question and trying to get clarity uh, in how you approach the board. Um, but, but as far as the politics, it's allowed. And, and you're fine, Madam Guardian. I'm going to let it go at that. Madam Chair, I yield. Let's move on. Okay. Any other comments for before we move on? All right. Thank you, Chief. And we look forward to this coming before the board tomorrow. We're going to move on to tab number 10. Cap number 10 is authorization to utilize 2016 SPOS bonds in the amount of $900,000 for renovations at the Douglas County Fire Training Complex, which is our new burn building and renovation of existing classroom and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Fire Chief Jollibet, you have the floor again. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair, Honorable Commissioners, child citizens. Uh, mainly the history of the uh, training complex uh, it was it started in October of 2009 uh, and they used splash funding from uh, 2002 to construct the facility uh, spent 1.3 million dollars uh, right now uh, the burn burn facility which is uh, been utilized by several regional partners uh, is in dire need of uh, uh, to be redone uh, so we're, we're asking to uh, come in and the board permission approval to redo our burn facility as well as our classroom uh, on that complex. Uh, and, and historically we've, we've trained over uh, 25,000 hours of continuing ed, about 1500 hours of firefighter certifications and uh, safety reasons, uh, the burn building has, it needs to be replaced. It's, it's, burned up and generally every five years the structure engineer come in and do a, a assessment and that had been done and so we're, we're looking to uh, with the board blessings to get a new burn sale or burn facility uh, and then also update our classrooms thank you chief any questions for it okay if there are no questions thank you chief we're going to move on to tab number 11 Approval of a contract with Terminus Municipal Advisors, LLC, for government financial support services in the amount of $70,000 in connection with the SPLOST service delivery and lost discussions and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Legal department, we have um, Attorney Coleman, you have the floor. As this is the contract that I mentioned earlier, um, it was presented by Terminus at, uh, at our request to uh, get them engaged in connection with the uh, SPLOST, LOST, and um, SES uh, discussions and negotiations. Uh, as you all know, the financial analysis uh, is really a critical part of those entire processes. And, you know, Terminal is, is, Terminus is best equipped to um, conduct that analysis having been involved in the last one and having monitored uh, the county's uh, finances and expenditures over the last several years. So they're an obvious choice to do this. It's gonna require uh, a lot of work from them uh, on all three. And they have proposed uh, a, a contract amount of $70,000 for all three. Uh, and the term will be until uh, they are completed and negotiations are completed. So uh, it's, it's fairly important. Uh, I know that um, Ken Bernard, who is working on the uh, loss and SDS projects, agrees that uh, we need them on board. And so that is the purpose of it. I, I would like for the contract to be uh, subject to further legal review to give us the time to go through it a little bit more. Uh, but uh, generally, I think it looks like it's uh, ready for your attention because there's some urgency on getting this thing done and moving forward. Thank you so much, Attorney Coleman. Any questions for it? 
brought it up. Sure. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. No, I, I appreciate you bringing this forth and, and further reiterating the point of our need for analytics. Um, um, you know, 10 years ago when we did this and, and Commissioner Mitchell from the first district is, 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 is aware uh, that we, 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 while we might've had numbers, we had no analytics. We lost in the loss, right? You had no numbers to substantiate any position anyway, one way or another. This time now we've got somebody at the table and a, a strengthened team that will ensure that this side of the equation is, is properly prepared to enter into conversations. Um, we, we, I'm sure we just didn't have it. There was none, not since the advent of terminus joining us and showing us that there's a higher level of financial maturity we can get to. Uh, it's about data, I've been saying it, but you, you need people who can actually do the work and bring forth that type of analytics. And, and again, it's just, it's, it's, it's a one-off, um, like the, uh, the two select committees that uh, Commissioner Mitchell is running for the laws and Commissioner Carthen is running for the SES. I think as we get through this process, uh, we'll just be in a, in a better position as, as we all weigh in and, uh, and get to a final results for all of our jurisdictions. We just need to make sure that we've got, um, uh, we've done our homework. So I just want to acknowledge I support um, this contract because I, I, you, you just don't want to pick population and be done. And that's, that's the easy way to do it, but you got no other data to counter. You, you have nothing to argue against doing one versus another. Just, and, and so uh, to my peers, uh, I look forward to us not having to have that type of conversation and that staff can bring us some analytics and choices and options accordingly as we go through this process. So I just want to make my point, Madam Chair, we're good. I got no comments. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. No issues. All right. Any other questions or comments forward? Okay. If there are none, thank you so much, uh, Attorney Coleman. If not, we're going to move on. Board of Commissioners tomorrow be prepared to approve or deny our expenses. Uh, we're going to move on to, we have one discussion item from uh, Chief Gelevet. It will be the project uh, budget update for fire station number nine. Um, Chief Gelevet, are you prepared and ready to go? Yes, ma'am. There you go. You have the floor. Again, thank you, Madam Chair, Honorable Commissioners, as well as the executive team and citizens. Uh, basically, uh, the Station 9 uh, Douglas Hill Thornton Road project uh, is, uh, has been approved in the process of going through our, our site survey uh, to determine exactly what, the, what that land use can be used for in terms of uh, size of building for, for the new fire station. Uh, today is the day where the site survey and all work should be completed and submitted. Uh, I do have uh, Hussey Gay Bell representative, Christopher Cottle on the, on the line to share some information uh, along with Mr. Terry Gable about, uh, about costs, uh, increasing costs. Uh, so it's Mr. Cottle, are you, are you on the line? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, uh, are you able to give the board a brief overview of of our conversation in terms of the uh, cost, project cost budget? Certainly. Um, Chief, thank you for the opportunity. Um, just to hit the highlights, as y'all may be aware, construction cost from the last 18 months <clears throat> are up about 28% uh, from where they were this time 18 months ago. Um, that's had a tremendous impact on project budgets, not just yours, but across the a spectrum. Uh, we're estimating now that a square foot cost for a facility that the chief and the county is contemplating is in the $450 a square foot range. <clears throat> we have sent some very conceptual floor plans um, showing all of the spaces that the county asked for. 
um, put square footages to all of those and uh, multiplied that amount by $450 a foot. And that um, is what we sent to the chief and to Terry um, holding our hands up in the air saying, I think we've got some concerns here. Um, I don't think that the budget that was set for the project two uh, years ago can be met. And I think it's off by a good bit. Chief, I don't have that uh, sitting in front of me. I don't have the uh, dollar amounts. I think Terry can probably speak better to that. But if there's any uh, questions on whys and the whats, I'm glad to help. So before Terry speaks, uh, mainly we just want to have a, a discussion because uh, the board is just let the board know that there is a, a increase on construction material, which we've been talking about different projects about. Uh, but uh, before we can go, and Chris, you, Mr. Cobb, you can tell me, before we can go decide whether three or four bay, uh, for us plan-wise, you'll need to have uh, either or. And I think uh, the district is, uh, we, def we definitely need the four bait uh, for that district, and that will involve uh, special equipment to deal with the industrial area as it grows and continue to grow for our citizens in, in, in that district. Uh, but for discussion-wise, we want to bring it up and and uh, get with our uh, executive team and talk about you know how how this will affect us as a as a county, so we can present it to our our board uh but today was just today to just bring it up for discussion uh mr gable you want to chime in uh yeah chief so and if everybody remember you know these numbers the original numbers were set back um in 2016 when the when the spas program first got initiated um and all the projects and and you would think um, would happen. All, the, all those budgets were low. As we move through the program, we've been able to manage them um, even without what we've, you know, with the circumstances we've got going on right now. Um, and that's something that just comes with part, with part of managing the, the overall SPLOS program. And that's, that's really where we're at right now. This has been, I think, something extraordinary uh, in what we're seeing. Madam Chair mentioned it earlier, and Chris can can expand on it if, if needed, but uh, materials are, have just gone out of the roof. Um, one thing to keep in mind with this project uh, is we're not, we're not anticipating having the plans done. Uh, it's gonna be somewhere around December or so. We're, we're talking about a construction project now that probably won't be let until January of 2023. So please keep that in mind. Um, but the concerns, and we're going to need the guidance from the board, is, is really the budget. So the, uh, the budget that was reforecasted for Fire Station 9 uh, is what, we, what I'm basing everything on right now, and that was $5.7 million. That's not including the, any of the equipment or the, the, the engine, the ladder. Uh, that, was, that was construction costs. And I felt pretty good about that going into this year, um, but it, boy, it has changed and it, it's showing up in other projects, not just this, um, it's showing up in, in the parks program as, as well, uh, just, just with materials. Um, so Chief, we can, I can throw some numbers out based on $450 a square foot um, as a starting point, just, just to give, uh, I guess for conversation, like you say, this is something that's probably gonna to need to be discussed more. But for a three bay, based on what Chris is currently telling us, uh, over the one point, over the $5.7 million, we're looking at about a $1.8 million increase. And for four bay, um, over the, uh, the budget of $5.7 million, we're looking at about a 2.6 million. So it's, 
there's some you know options are on the table the revenues uh, and madam chair again uh, um, hit on this earlier this great we got revenues going up um, but it's also we're, we're, we're going up against um, obviously a very high inflation in what it's doing the to, to construction and how it's impacting it um, as we speak so um, we and I, that was the purpose of the of bringing it up as a discussion item. We need to know, we still got a little bit of work to do, Chris does on his end. Um, he's got the survey as completed. Uh, he's got to confirm that a four bay, uh, one story building would fit on the site. Once he does that, uh, then we'll be, we will be needing to let him know uh, at the board's um, decision as to how to move forward. Uh, do we move forward with, with a four bay um, with, with the estimated construction costs right now of a $2.6 million increase? Um, so he'll obviously need to know that, or we're gonna, we're gonna uh, minimize that cost and go with a three bay of a $1.8 million increase. So it's, it's a big increase, and I, that's why the chief felt the need to bring it before the board uh, this early, um, just to, to give everybody a heads up and and um, and again make some make some decisions. Uh, Chris, I guess is that is that is that stating it properly from your viewpoint and what you need? Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> now, in terms of the fire, on the far side. Uh, what we're doing, our, our plan is once we get the definite site survey information on what that uh, land can hold, then we're going to get with uh, our deputy county administrator, finance team, and everybody and sit down and, and uh, do all the legwork to determine uh, to bring some solid to the board of commissioners so they can have something to look at and, and make decisions on. So that's what we're waiting on that report. Uh, I think Mr. Chris Coddle, Chris Ricardo was telling me that the deadline was today for that report, and they, they anticipate getting it uh, in the near future, so we can take that information back to our executive team and uh, bring some good, solid information to the board. Just want today, just like like we said, just bring up discussion on it, let y'all know that we are what we're facing in terms of uh, our Station Nine project. Thank you, Chair. Chair. Yes, okay, Vice Chair, you have the floor. No, I'm just, I got it, okay. All right, so again, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, the Chief. Um, duly noted discussion. I'm going to make my point one more time for our conversation. So you have a list. You knew this was one of the key verticals. We know with the prior county administrator, Mark Till, we sat in our room, Madam Chair, and we came up with the list that went to New York. Let's keep this simple. And so we knew we had to spread it out over time. You couldn't eat everything all at once. So we spread the verticals over time. Got it. I'm, I'm making you look at the behavior that's being demonstrated in today's meeting and know the implications, guys. It's okay. So we've got a college education that we've been funding with this, this fire station. I won't get there. We set aside the money. We knew we'd go need some calculators and everything to go in there. Now what I'm hearing is that now we're, we're, we're robbing from the future with stuff down the list to move it places, which is fine. We're, we're, we're taking from the future. Right? You haven't finished what you got today. Now at some point, you're going to move into that new apartment, that dorm, that new house. It's like, okay, but but... We run around in a new fancy car. A car without no house. Huh. I see. Now I'm just I'm just following the math, guys. This is simple to me. <laughs> you need to freeze everything that y'all keep spending on and make sure you got coverage for this 2.6. Right? I mean, it, it, it's too much vacillation. We've been talking about four bays. I can probably run three full videos. Four bays, four bays, four bays. So that's being communicated. 
Now I'm saying, we're like, well, we, maybe we need to stop. Well, then you need to stop doing all that other stuff because that's what the cash was there for. That's the point of a party. But I get it. It moved. Nobody challenged it. We sort of let it go. But every now and then, it's the bear that grabs the sound. I'm like, okay, I'm going to grab this rat. It's the one you grab. You don't see everything. Everything goes by. That's fine. But every now and then, you're going to grab like, Okay, now where are y'all going with this? Right? I mean, are y'all following the bigger picture of the cash flow? Right? I don't think we can have this conversation without y'all being a little bit more show us something in writing. I can follow it. I'm sitting here like, okay, guys, it's $2.6 million. That means you freeze everything. Everything. Until you adequately got both the equipment and the building covered based on today's times. All right, that's pretty easy math. Show me that scenario, guys. So what gets compromised on the list? Just a spread, it's just a spreadsheet. Somebody in a $100 million budget, government, can do this simple math problem was to be able to sit down and have a conversation about, okay, now what we're doing here. Because this is material. See, I'm over here with the six cents. And I'm like, okay, whoa, I can't wait to go down Thornton Road today. Like, wow. Right, there's no coverage. And you're delaying coverage for, like, I get state of good repair. I ain't got no problem with it. I'm good, but I'm just like, look at how you're going about doing this. Not what, it's about the structure. And y'all following this thing? And we can pretend like we ain't seeing it and I don't understand it. And I was just like, okay, all right, y'all over sight. That's okay, good. Y'all are good like that. I don't, I don't have that luxury. So I have to sit here, like, okay, I gotta pay attention. You're gonna come up short. You're gonna come up short. And then, Madam Chair, on our watch, we sit here, you got a half complete building. It didn't quite fulfill it. Just, we just do something together. And you lose the spirit, like, yeah, you're going to build something, but it didn't really meet the expectation of what was set for five years. There should be no compromise. It shouldn't be like, what for? Stick to what you had on the list. It was pretty. So that, that's, that's, that's what this is about. And y'all are, y'all are being somewhat in your decision making regarding how y'all are moving stuff around within your discretion. I'm showing you the impact of your discretionary power. Now, you know, when y'all did that, you compromised this right. Now, you know you did that and that come about that. Now, I'm good right now because at some point, y'all gonna have to come talk to me. So I'm not making a big deal right now. It's just discussion. But at some point, now, where were we? Now, why we do it that way? But don't you see the impact that's not on us? And so, yes, I agree. Staff does get to make decisions and stuff. But at some point, I've got to fund these choices and these trade-offs. I got to look to my four peers and say, okay, guys, what are we going to do now? So I'm, I'm just making my point I'm, beyond, beyond the advocacy, but obviously it needs to go where it's supposed to go. It's how y'all, like, y'all are, are compromising, y'all spending that fire and EMS, like, okay, hopefully y'all are staying within the boundaries. I'm sure you are, David and Terry, y'all are keeping it there, but y'all are loosely, like, I'm, I mean, I get chairs of the committees. I'm, I'm good. I'm making my point. Don't walk into this. I get it. I get it. So stay tuned and uh, we'll, we'll catch up with this later. There's nothing to decide right now. It's discussion. You guys, you know, danced around and bring it forward. That's it. $2.6 million. You got to clear the board for it to ensure that it's done. Put, put, pass a resolution, pass some type of administrative concurrent. Don't touch this. Restrict it. Else, without us restricting this, it's still loose. That's governance. That's control. So, you're bringing it up, and I, I know what staff is asking, okay, what y'all want us to do? Because in the absence, they just don't go back doing what they're doing, the same old stuff to my peers. So, guys, I look forward to you guys weighing in. I don't know we can solve it right now. They, they have not given us anything in writing. We shouldn't have to respond to something like this to so material um, with a, a colorful conversation. So, Madam Chair, I just wanted to make my point. Um, we're good, um, and I yield back since it's just discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Certainly, this was just a premier presentation, just for obvious reasons, with the cloud of uh, inflation over our head. We realize some adjustments will be made as we prepare analytics to bring before the board through the committee and also through uh, Terry Gable and, and um, David Good. We will be looking at that uh, along with the gentleman that's on the line that was speaking early, and I lost sight of his name, Chris Collin. Um, Certainly, we, uh, this is just no different than what we, we had to do for the multi-purpose center. We had to make adjustments before 
we had a Cadillac version on this uh, radar and we moved to a Camry version. So we'll see what that land can hold. We may not be able to hold four bays. So that will put us in a position of a $1.8 million increase. But if we certainly want um, everything possible for that area because of the industry that's sitting there and um, all the equipment that's required to make sure that we advance safety in that area. Uh, we'll certainly come before this board for discussion, but certainly this was just a premier presentation, just kind of wanted you all to, and I know the board is certainly in tune with this, with the economy and the inflation, but we just wanted to share the changes and we promise you we'll come back with a more thoughtful plan and some more analytics, uh, so well-defined analytics to uh, uh, prepare our course of action as we go forward. So thank you, Vice Chair and, and Board yep. of Commissioners. Anybody else have any comment or questions at this time? If not, we can move on. Um, Board of Commissioners, I, I wanted to yield the floor to you if you had some comments before I, I uh, yield to our um, County attorney regarding um, whether we need to go into executive session or not. But Vice Chair, I believe you wanted to talk about the bipartisan infrastructure bill. You mentioned you had a few comments that you would bring to our board when we met briefly the other day, uh, two days ago, with the team just to talk about the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Do you still want to do that or? Uh, yes, let's let's just broach it very very quickly because we we got a transportation committee tomorrow and that. I didn't want to get ahead of that, but okay. So, um, Director Valentine and um, Madam ACA, are you guys available? Uh, I just want to give the highlight of the moment uh, for my peers regarding the bipartisan. Um, in, in essence, we, we recognize there is money out there uh, for us to try to align ourselves around. And there's been a couple more projects uh, beyond what we have already submitted to both the Senate, uh, both, uh, basically uh, our senators and our, our congressmen. Um, that there's been a couple more projects that have been identified based on clarity of the Treasury Service about how we can use money, what we can pursue, right? So um, I'll let my let staff bring forward what was the project that we think that we should consider going after guys in light of the fact that we already set a set of priorities. So can you, either one of you guys can respond. Uh, Commissioner, this is Miguel. I, right. I'll, I'll start it off and... Uh... Yep. Uh, we can, we can uh, flesh it out a little more, but essentially uh, back in December, uh, the Atlanta Regional Commission opened up a call for projects, which is the, the process for allocating federal funding. And we applied for additional funding for all of our major uh, TIP projects, uh, transportation improvement plan projects. That process has been playing out, it's been, it's been sort of held in abeyance by the ARC because they knew that this legislation was being considered and it was moving through that process. And so what we have found uh, is that um, now that the, the bill has passed and they've uh, identified that there is additional funding for various categories, then there will be another opportunity for us to apply for funding for projects that we couldn't before because there was no funding available, but now we're able to apply. Uh, as it relates to, to transportation, one of the main things that we uh, had been looking at, and uh, we, we certainly are considering applying for um, in the near future, uh, is uh, the, the smart technology for traffic signal control essentially <clears throat> having the ability to, uh, to optimize the operation of intersections. So that's an operational improvement uh, project. We're also looking at the, the potential for a more centralized traffic management center. Uh, we, we do have presently a, a limited uh, traffic management center. We have a number of our corridors um, and signals uh, we were able to remotely uh, utilize the, the technology and uh, see what's happening and make adjustments. So this new funding will allow us the opportunity to make a, a more robust application for improving uh, that technology. 
Uh, so, so those are a, a couple of the projects. There are others as it relates to um, the potential for trails uh, as well. And uh, uh, I'll defer to, to Tiffany to see if she has uh, a list of additional projects that we can apply for. But, but again, we already made application for our um, typical or uh, our uh, ongoing TIP projects. Uh, this would be additional funding available so that we can take advantage of for additional projects. I'll I know, stop thank, there. Yeah, no, that, that was sufficient. So again, I, I don't want to turn this into a committee uh, a conversation. I'm sure it was just more of a, uh, to my peers, there is, we, we do have to move fast um, and be thoughtful about it. But again, I'm back to, in bringing this up, look at our capacity to deliver. Right. So we, we got um, in our finance committee today, me and Vice Chairman, um, um, Commissioner Guider from the 4th District will discuss, um, go over our ARP list. And what, what is our burn rate with our current money that we got in, in pipe? And I'm sure about to go back in for the next round. We're at with that. So we're, we're applying for money. And yes, we're in a good place, guys. I'm looking at administration, but how y'all going to deliver? Where are my analytics? It's like a black, that, and we have to ask these very tough, sharp questions. We got, okay, where are things? Because there's no, no data other than our spots that, that's consistent, that, that helps us make, you know, as they call it, executive decision making. All right, so it, this is where I'm, I'm sitting here, like, okay, on one hand, yes, I'm, I'm in support of pursuing, but at the same point, I got paused because I'm concerned about administration's capacity to deliver and keep up with it. And that's all, it's like, okay, it's great to give my son a million bucks, but you gotta walk around like, okay, but, okay, but right now we're, we're sitting on cash. We're sitting on cash, guys. We're sitting on a lot of cash. We ask for more money. Same conversation I had in the last administration. Okay, guys, and it's great to talk about the projects which show the delivery. Now, SPLOS was the model, but I got to keep emphasizing SPLOS was during the time that we came out of that period. Now everything has been amplified. So it's, it's a bigger, it's heavier. And it, it ain't like we it expanded to the, based on the inflation, our, our personnel didn't expand because of the inflation of everything in cash, in costs. So I wanted to bring this up to you guys like, look, I, I get it. You got to be thoughtful about it. it's not so much as should we do anything the question is i mean we're legislators the question is can administration handle this right now yeah let's get in list let's get in queue let's think for the future but i'm, I'm, I'm sure more of the challenge is okay guys y'all have got to get this this project manager office in here y'all got to get these federal compliance in here because again we keep we, we we keep saying yes and i have no problem with it i'm just saying okay guys don't i mean we you you got to show that you've got the capacity not just the credit, not just the cash. You have the capacity to deliver against this. And that's really what it's about. It's about capacity. And that's, that's why I brought, brought this up, Madam Chair, not to belabor the moment. It's just say, no, you're fine. We're good. Guys, are y'all paying attention? Can staff deliver against this? And, and that's all. What is your plan to execute on all this? Where's my project manager? I know, Ms. Procurement, we, we're coming. We'll, we'll talk about that on Thursday, whenever we meet for the um, oversight committee. But these are things that, get, that keep me up at night while everybody is sleeping that I got to sit here like, okay, now how do you want to do this? Now, who's really paying attention to this? Do they understand that, okay, this thing could implode? And it just, it's just, this, it's not, not, not a, you know, a sky is falling type of guy. I'm just in the middle like, okay, this doesn't take a rocket science to know that it's a good place to be, but are you ready? Have you steadied yourself? Are y'all strengthening yourselves? Are y'all anticipating this? Or we, because um, this is unprecedented times, so you need to think from a, an unprecedented perspective. You can't think like you used to think, and then we're saying that it's a different time, but you're thinking the same way. Right? You're going to have the same performance in a time which is like, this ain't the same, guys. Y'all asking for an awful lot. And the board is willing to support you, but I'm like, okay, guys, y'all got to have capacity. And I'm sure I made my point. I yield the floor. There's no need to go on. Um, not may say we're okay, unless my peers have questions. This was more of just a topic. To bring up again, we keep it keeps growing. <laughs> and we'll keep having this conversation about expanding. Go, guys, go do the work. I'm like, guys, I don't know if they can do all this work. I'm not convinced yet. 
but that's me. I, I, I will respect it, my will of my peers, but is it, is it too much? Convince me that y'all got a plan, that y'all have the capacity to deliver against all this. That's the conversation I'm going to have next month. So, can you deliver? It's one thing to sell, it's another to deliver and deliver in a way that we don't experience you know, large scale things like with that transportation center. I haven't experienced, I haven't healed from that yet. So it's legitimate. This is okay, I hear you. All right, I yield, Madam Chair, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other comments, board? I think certainly my, my patience is, tested, is being tested as well, stepping out of a non-governmental world where we get things done. And in the government world, world, the first narrative that I was hit with when I took office was everything moves slow in government. So I have learned to pace my patience. My executive team is working on getting that program manager here. I believe we should have that person on board by June, the end of June is what I'm looking at. I'm just, I try to pace my patience every time I hear a date, but I want to assure the board that it is coming. Um, there are so many layers of bureaucracy in government that we have hurdles that we have to cross, but I promise you the playbook is healthy, heavy and healthy. So when we uh, press forward with this program manager, we should start seeing some tremendous amount of movement. So I'm, I'm like you all, I feel the same way. I'm just, just pacing my patience. So um, executive team, I know you hear the message. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair, again for messaging we need to move but as soon as uh we get that contract in place we need to get out the gate quickly all right with that if there's nothing else to come uh, really from the board um attorney um coleman at this time do we need to go into executive session yes madam chair i would recommend executive session to discuss personnel matters real estate matters and litigation matters okay thank you so much uh attorney Board of Commissioners, uh, certainly at this time, do we have a motion to go in executive session? Motion to go in executive session with a break, Madam Chair, at your discretion. Second. Okay. okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion board? We have a motion and a second. When I call your districts, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a Bible unanimous vote. Going to executive session. Uh, thank you again, citizens of Douglas County, for your uh, patience. Uh, the Board of Commissioners have just uh, uh, we completed our uh, executive session, and we are returning back to the floor. Board of Commissioners, do you have anything to add before I close out? Madam Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, this is more administrative and, and, and a broad pre-look. Um, this coming Thursday, I want to make sure we have an announcement tomorrow, um, and adequately all communication goes off regarding my seventh annual mental health forum. Um, this coming um, um, Thursday from 6.30 um, in Citizen Hall. It will be um, hybrid, um, meaning live audience. Uh, we're going to close it at some point because of the um, um, special nature. People want to talk personally versus being online broad, but it will be broadcast live for the most of it. And I just want to make sure I get that communication out uh, during tomorrow's announcements, Madam Chair. So Rick and or somebody come talk to me and make sure we get that done. Madam Chair, I yield for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chair. Any other comments, board? Okay, with that being said, thank you so much, citizens of the Douglas County, uh, Douglas County and also Douglas County Board of Commissioners and all our executive team this morning for participating in this uh, work session. It was pretty um, meaty. We've had a lot of good discussions today. 
and uh, certainly welcome our citizens to join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, in for our in-person um, meeting, which will be held in Citizen Hall tomorrow at 6 p.m., which will be our legislative voting meeting. All right, if there's nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners, I urge our citizens to continue to remain safe. And this meeting is adjourned. And I'll see you all tomorrow, Board of Commissioners and the citizens at 6 p.m. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.